Mr. Sam, place the flag, we honor America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Mayor, before we start, I, I should report that I set the room up this way because I wanted to create as much room at the table for anybody from the general public. They want to sit at the table and more than welcome to do that. And then, yeah, and there's more comfortable chairs there, so if you guys want to move, yeah. <laughs> all right, well, first of all, thank you for being here and, and welcome to everyone. Uh, uh, we, uh, as, as a lot of people know, we have scheduled uh, two public meetings uh, to, to, have, to take input on uh, budget priorities, and, um, and I'm not going to blame Tracy for uh, the weather or our outages or anything, um, but there was some interference there, and both meetings did have to be canceled. And, and so for that reason, at the beginning of this agenda, we wanted to start with a makeup session and uh, invite members of the public to, to present their ideas and priorities for this budget. Um, and uh, Cody over there is, uh, has asked to go first, so I think we'll, we'll start with him. Can I sit here? That's fine. Okay. Um, one, um, I, I read your three questions online, and, but I... Well, my concern is that we, we do it by the book, budget by the book here. And I see that Paul trying to do a balanced scorecard or budgeting for outcomes type of a budget. And I, I'm curious, if, without keeping work orders and inventory control and purchase orders and whatnot, the only thing we've got is a historical trend on what happened the year before to, to make a prediction. Uh, I'm really concerned about not having it. I think we need to go back to a line item budget or, or, or zero base budget type of budget. Um, I also, in accordance with the local government laws, this book here, which is a law book, and also of the uh, Oregon State law, this is a budget meeting. Um, I don't see a quorum of, of it to have a, to make any decisions in this meeting. Um, I don't think it was legal to do without the budget message being read first for us to see the budget and to make recommendations on it. I hadn't seen it advertised in the newspaper for 30 days. We're not a city of over 200,000 where a council can do this. We have to have a budget committee that comprises an equal number of the council and citizens. So I, 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 I'm really questioning this thing, and I'm going to talk to the Department of Revenue as soon as I'm a little bit better about this list, because I have concerns about it. But we need to budget by the book, that's all I'm saying, or, or there's going to be trouble. So we we got to find some performance measures, how to measure performance, how, 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 how are we basing, what are we basing our budget on, what data are we using? We have to have just statistical data, that's all there is to it, and I don't see going to the book. All, all the legislature we're supposed to have in our books is the, by law, I don't see it there. There's no potential for the funds. There's, there's nothing. There's, there's, there's nothing. It's, it's a joke. So, and that's really all I got to say. I, I just want to budget. Thank you. Budget and buy the book. Okay. And I'm, I got to go. Excuse me. I'm, I shouldn't be here. Thank you. Okay. Who's next? Derek? Okay, I'm Gary Bunkoff, and um, what I would like to see a top priority on the budget this year would be cost savings, cost cuttings. Um, I'd like to see some transparency on some budget items, or quite a few of the budget items relating to um, like benefit, employee benefits, um, the amount of overtime the city pays for travel and training, and I don't mean in this department, let's have a total. This is the total of 
what our benefits cost us, PERS, um, insurance, things like that, so that the public can see where we stand and we can, we can then run a comparison on what other cities are doing that are our size. Are we out of line? Um, I see that on the next city council you're going to talk about a rate increase uh, or a rate study, which usually means a rate increase. I think that uh, you owe it to the citizens to cut costs across the board rather than talk about more increases at this time. We are in a recession. Every other government agency is looking for ways to cut costs, but I never see that um, in, in, in our budgeting. We just look at what we did last year and, and move on. And, and when they did try to cut some costs, I mean, there was just heck to pay. So I really think that um, the citizens have a right to see what we're paying, what other cities are paying, and um, so that either get behind the need for a rate increase or, or uh, get behind some cost-cutting measures. I'd like to see more historical data. In looking at the budget, you had two years prior. Um, it would seem to me that that's not enough. Um, we forget, in, in a two-year period, we forget how much things have increased over, say, a 10-year period. Um, I, think, I think it would be very revealing to see what is the administrative cost over the last 10 years. Has that increase been greater than inflation? A lot of us can remember back when there was only four people in the office here. So, you know, we need to do some uh, analysis of our costs staffing levels, and you do this with historical data, and, and it isn't in the budget. I'd like to see that kind of information presented. And I, let's see, I guess I've covered everything. And, and I, th this, this could be for all departments, I mean, a, a real, analysis of what it's costing us to do every operation, not just the administrative, but uh, you take the utility. Um, how much money are they really paying to the city to operate? I mean, they're an enterprise fund. Are they getting a, are they getting a fair shake from the city? Uh, you know, when I run through the numbers, I, I don't think they're getting a fair shake. I think they're being overcharge for what they what benefits they get from the city and yet they're an enterprise fund and it's up and the citizens are paying for their service and if, if they're being charged too much then we have to pay too much in utilities and here we are talking about another rate study for rate increases. I don't think that's right. I, I think it's up to the budget committee to start setting some parameters and and uh, controlling Raising co rising costs that we'll all end up paying more for. And, and, and it's coming, it's really coming to light with this um, emergency services task force. It's going to cost a lot of money to have what we want in a fire department. But where is that money going to come from? We start talking <coughs> two or three dollars a thousand of the levy on our property. Uh, maybe we need to look at, maybe we're spending too much already for some of the other services. Maybe we need to adjust our dollars. And you can't do that without knowing all the data and the facts. And, and I think that should be out in the open and where not just the budget committee can look at it, but the citizens can look at it. Thank you. Can I respond? No, uh, not at this oh. Okay. Who's next? Public works is an important item. We're down 
we used to have uh, at least three people uh, working full time on that department. We're now down to two, and this gentleman, and he's trying to run it from, I think, Goldendale, if I'm not mistaken, or I know outside of town. Uh, one of the benefits of somebody local is that people like Sheldon uh, get hands-on training from somebody who has all the certifications. The way the department's running right now, there's, they're running from <coughs> job to job, and they're never able to get things really done well. And uh, my street's one of them, Crest. Uh, it was tore up a year ago uh, for a house that went in there, and it was six or eight months before they came in and put a patch in, and the patch is uh, really rough. Uh, there's another one very similar to that up on Regulator, uh, where uh, there was a blowout from the water main uh, that's been patched, but it's not very, not very smooth. And and this is a result of not having uh, enough people to deal with something uh, properly to begin with. And it's just it it has to do with not having enough personnel. Um, like Gary, I'm on the I'm on the task force, and it is a concern. What are we going to end up paying for a fire department? Uh, There's some folks that believe that uh, it ought to be all volunteer, and I'd like to point out that the, the department that we have today is basically all volunteer. There's one person that I'm aware of that's paid, and uh, that's uh, Chief Devin Wells. The rest of them are all volunteers. And yet it's still an expensive enterprise. And if you're going to have the level of service that I think people um, expect, you're going to have uh, a couple of paramedics here in town, and you're going to end up paying them because you're not going to get somebody who's going to get an associate's degree and whatever else they have to go through, uh, paying out all that money and spending all that time, and expect them to come out and work for free. That's just not going to happen. Not when they can go to work on the same place and get forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year. So that becomes a major issue. Along with the building that we have sitting down here, empty, that's degrading month by month by month by month. There's excellent uh, commercial real estate firms in the city of Portland. Travel Crow comes to the there's several others down there that somebody should be contacting and talking to and getting them out here to assess that building and get it on the market. And it shouldn't be a local firm. We need somebody, somebody that has some, <coughs> some contacts and does, and does things other than just uh, houses and whatnot. The last I want to talk about um, events here in town. For a long time, probably 10 years or longer now, the city has been sponsoring to the tune of about $8,000 sailboat racing. So far, I haven't seen a thing come out of that. What I, what I have seen is money leave the city. There's a contract in place. I don't know if any of you have ever read that contract when they bought the sailboats. Um, and I think we bought seven of them the first time and we bought some since. That contract is so poorly written you can't tell really who owns the sailboats, uh, who's responsible for the sailboats, um, who, who's supposed to do maintenance on them. That, that all needs to be revisited. During the summer, um, when there's boating going on, <coughs> And it only goes on during the summer. It's not a it's not a year-round uh, type of type of uh, event. There's nobody here watching it. There's events and there's events. There's things like that that get no publicity. That have no sponsorship. And really don't draw anything. There's no people coming into town to watch it. This is not NASCAR. If you had a NASCAR event or something else like that, or something like they do down at PIR, or uh, some kind of a, uh, a game, like a football game, you don't just have the participants. You also have people coming in town to watch it. 
you have sponsors for it, you have uh, uh, media coming in to cover it, and the only way you get that in sailboats is when you get into really large boats, ocean racing, uh, America's Cup type of thing. And you can't do anything like that because of the, the constraints that we have here. You can't get a large boat through, through down there, and even if you did, you couldn't launch it unless you brought in a crane. So this is, this is nice. It's great. I'm glad we have it. I, I'm, I'm able to walk, sit in my office and watch it. And that's a pleasure. But is it doing the city any good? I don't think so. And I think it's time to cut back on what we're spending for that. Thank you. suggest that you look into getting that property with the land on the market, like Rob said, with the commercial agent in Portland. My experience here has been interesting. Um, it's usually 10% of the agents that do the business, and my broker that I had here that I fired the first one is from Portland, and they know what they're doing. I'd be happy to get a recommendation because you do need a commercial broker. I think everybody needs to step aside when this happens and listen to the broker because they do it seven days a week. And here in this town, we seem to try to take control of that. It's like a for sale by owner. It just doesn't work. So I would say, I don't know what it's worth today and I don't know what it's gonna be worth in five years. I think the market here is gonna be depressed a bit longer because LA is just starting to return. So I would suggest that you take that money get that eyesore out of here and get something decent there and do it the right way. That's all. Thank you. I don't know if I'm public, but I am a committee. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. You're here for the, the Boards and Commissions, which is our next agenda. So. Um, so before we move on to that next agenda item, which is the uh, boards and commissions here to present ideas and priorities, I just wanted to go back to uh, the question about, is this a budget committee meeting? There's not a quorum of the budget committee here and the decision making, just to, to make sure that we clarify that process um, for everyone that's watching, everyone that's participating. And I don't know if Paul and Mary have comments on that, but my understanding is that members of a budget committee are allowed to meet as, uh, prior to the release of the budget message <clears throat> for exactly this purpose, setting priorities but not making decisions. Uh, feel free to jump in if I'm wrong. In that. the process, the council had adopted, um, and, and in most communities, the city council sets the priorities for the budget. That's when staff does its work to create the budget and the budget committee Just before we go to um, Parks and Rec, um, Karen Peck, before she speaks, I just wanted to let all the council know that you got a copy of her report in your box just in case you didn't check your box when you came in. Okay. And Mary Council, just also, I have a written uh, series of comments that I received from a citizen late yesterday afternoon. I'll make copies of those and get those to you. And are you going to, we'll just have that as part of the record of this meeting right. then? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so were there any questions from members of the council about the, you know, the, that process and the, the challenge that it's 
uh, a meeting of the budget committee and, and so on. Well, no, I heard years, but my understanding was this was a council meeting to receive public input for budget related issues, uh, not just public, but staff, and so it was more of a listening mode part of a council meeting rather than a budget meeting. Exactly. This, this is a council meeting. Okay. Well, I, I thought you said this was a budget meeting. No, no. Uh, it was mentioned earlier okay. on that, right. that this was a meeting of the budget committee. Right. I'm just trying to make right. sure that that's clear on the record. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. So thanks for asking. Arnie, uh, you, you just walked in. We're actually right at the end of our agenda item. Um, members of the public wanting to present ideas and priorities for the budget. And since you're here, I just wanted to offer you the chance to take the chair and share your ideas. You don't have to, but. Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, I'm Mike Canonan, resident, of course. We had an in interesting budget process last year. I think there were uh, different points of view that came in that maybe you should listen to. But also, I think they had some very negative effects on the city. So this year, before going in, one thing I think we need to look at is if we want to have a safe community, we need to make sure emergency services is taken care of and is a priority. There's been a lot of controversy the last year. We need to have money for a fire chief and a paramedic for a combination thereof or more or less. Make sure there's money involved for that. Where does this money come from? <coughs> One thing I'd like to suggest that you take a look at is previous council decided to pay off the uh, fire hall loan in an equally amateur, monthly amateur, amateurized manner so that they paid 120th of the amount due every month. State law does not require that. Why are we paying almost $50,000 a year when we could sell a piece of property shortly and the amount we owe on that uh, fire hall will go down by over half? Of course, if it hadn't been delayed, it would completely paid off, but we couldn't control that. So by resolution, those payments were made by resolution. You can reduce them and increase your budget. I think there's $45,000 left to pay this year. By resolution, you can say, hey, we want to pay $100 a month. Boom, and you just gain $45,000 for your budget. And for the following year, we have 10 years to do this. It can be graduated. So maybe we pay $100 a month for a couple of years, and then we have to bump it up. Then the piece of property sells down in Wanapa, and all of a sudden we know what we have left, and it's going to be a whole lot less than what we're paying right now. So why are we hurting ourselves? Anyway, take a look at that, please. I've also found that tourism managed to shed some of their responsibilities that everybody in the world that I've talked to said, hey, flowers in town, making the town look decent, that is a tourist activity. <coughs> making our town look, look, look good to visitors, that is a tourist activity. Take a look at watering flowers for $11,000 a year versus a fire chief, which would you rather have? Now, you have a heart attack and die because there's no paramedic, we'll have flowers that we can put on your gravestone. But I'd rather not worry about that, okay? Let's take care of first things first. Then we can start getting some of the niceties. But let's take care of those first priorities and that's keeping everybody safe. And that would be <coughs> my main message and where some of that money can come from as you go through the process but I hope you'll direct the budget committee to make sure they keep everyone safe first instead of last, which seemed to be what happened last year. Thanks. Thank you, Arnie.
Okay, now we'll bring to a close the, um, the item for uh, public presenting ideas and priorities. And we'll move on to our next agenda item, which is boards and commissions to present ideas and priorities. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Can I pull this over? Yeah, why don't you pull it over? Just for the <coughs> hey, I'm the next bus driver. and I've, I've lived in Cascade Locks since uh, 1977. And I've been on, uh, I've worked for the city as a summer recreation director for probably 30 years. And I've been on the committee actually for less time, maybe 20. So I've, I've been here for a long time and I intend to stay here for a long time. In fact, my permanent uh, place of rest is about a half a block from my house. So. <laughs> I plan to be here a while. Um, I'm not a business-minded person at all, as you all know. Um, and there are some um, counselors I've not met. And Dave, we've corresponded email a time or two, but we've, we've never met. So it's nice to meet all of you. Um, I don't come up here very often because I'm not business-minded, I guess. I just like to do my job and uh, Right now, we are, our, Pam and I are taking care of the recreation center. And if you have meetings here on Tuesday and Thursday evenings before uh, 7 p.m., you see us here. You hear us here even more than you see us, I'm sure. Um, we have um, two people working two nights a week, two hours a night. And we have an average of 30 kids a night. And I don't know how you do averages. So I just said, okay. Occasionally we've had as many as 35 or 38 kids, and they're mostly elementary. Um, so sometimes we might have four fifth and sixth graders, and the rest are little kids. Uh, the attendance in uh, 2010 was 1,437 kids, and last year was 1,892 kids. And uh, we break it down uh, da daily and then monthly for our, just for, because for, I like to know. I kind of like to know these things. Um, and as Arnie was speaking and some of the others, um, and I didn't have this down, it would be, it's nice to know that if some child got hurt and needed more than a, a kiss and a Band-Aid, which we, of course, we couldn't do the kiss, but we could do the Band-Aid, <laughs> that I could call on someone to come and um, that there would be someone available to come and help out. Um, I try not to worry about the emergencies that could happen. We've had a few when we've dealt with them here, but I, I did know in the past that I could call for an expert. Um, let's see. Um, we've kind of, the Parks and Recreation Committee's kind of been tossing around the possibility of, of temporarily or whatever, as a trial basis maybe, using the summer recreation revenue to increase our program here and improve it. Maybe some more hours, maybe um, Someone could work one of the nights. I'm not willing to work three nights a week here. Right now, I, I can still handle two, but it's, it's very tiring for me. Um, so we have, you, you see there before you some ideas we have, and you may not even care about that right now. Uh, that's just what we think, what we're thinking of. Of course, our original most important thing would be we'd love to see our budget back to the, uh, what it was like three years ago. Um, and then because I'm not business-minded, I hear all this talk about emergency services and everything, and I think, wow, what is more important around here? But I'll, think, I'll try to think about budget for Parks and Rec. Um, so as I said, you probably don't care what we're thinking about um, specifically at this time, um, but just that we're thinking about some changes and, and if we could have an increase in our budget, well, we, we can use it. We have things we want to do and uh, um, we would like to, to make some improvements to the little room downstairs, the small meeting room. Uh, we'd like to spruce it up a bit so it's not um, so um, crude, I guess, or rough, rough, excuse me. 
Um, and it was my idea to take the carpet out because I'd rather have that cement floor that I could sweep and mop than a carpet that we couldn't do anything with. So we do have the, the cement floor, but um, we would like to have the new ceiling, the ceiling fixed and, and some kind of tile flooring or something that we could clean or linoleum or something we could clean easily. And uh, there is, I believe, still a water fountain here that was ordered a few years ago and we would uh, like to have it installed. And I know that's kind of a problem because I'm not sure where it would be, but it would be, it would be better for the kids if it were downstairs, but for the general public, it would be better if it were up here. So I don't know, but I'm, we don't want the kids on the stairs. So if we had it up here, that would just mean another reason, another excuse to run up and down the stairs a hundred times every night. Uh, having the library open now um, is a blessing in some ways and, and not in other ways, because now the kids have an excuse to run up and down stairs. So I don't know. I don't know if we can get a fountain in. I had heard that it's uh, not a handicapped accessible fountain, and that's why it was not installed. And it could be because they just don't know where, how to hook it up. So that's kind of what I had in mind. Um, our budget as it stands now is, is doable, but I would sure like to see an increase, of course, or back to what it originally was. Did I make any sense at all? <laughs> I'm random, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, you, you're suggesting the use of summer recreation revenue. Could you just explain for people that don't know oh. how that revenue is generated? Okay, uh, the summer recreation money um, was used up and well, up until we did it last year even. Um, there was a, a separate program from what's here at night, two, uh, two nights a week. It was money used to um, use a school bus and take the kids out of town to do swimming and, and skate world and movies. And we used to do field trips. I even took adults on trips. I do not have a current bus driver's license and, and won't be renewing mine. Um, it's a little harder to keep that as, as we get older, I must say. Um, so, to have a bus activity and for summer rec, we would have to hire or lease, I guess you could say, a bus and driver. And we did that four activities last year. Three of them we had a fairly good size group. I don't have the numbers with me. The fourth one, I went was going to go along as chaperone on the bus, and uh, I ended up taking them in my van and sent the bus back. So the numbers have dropped drastically through the years. I used to have 45 kids on the bus in when I first started. But through the years, it's dropped. And the last four years, it's really dropped. And two years, I've used my van and, and uh, volunteers to take the kids swimming. And sometimes I only needed mine. So it, it seems like the need isn't there as much as it used to be to take the kids somewhere for an activity. Uh, that's just the Parks and Rec's impression. I think, because for one thing, if I say, hey, let's go see a movie, let's go see da da da, and they say, oh, I saw that a week ago, you know. The kids are, their, their families are taking them to do things, I guess. Um, the other thing could be that the ones that aren't might not have the money to go do those activities, because everything costs. So, I don't know if I answered your question or not. Um. Yeah, I think it was, I should have been asking a different question. <laughs> I, so what, I, if I understand your suggestion right now, what you're saying is the money that's been budgeted for mm -hmm. summer programs to be reallocated for evening programs. Mm -hmm. okay. And maybe maybe keep some in, I think I mentioned to keep some in reserve in case we said, hey, there's going to be a wonderful ball game or something. Uh, let's uh, lease a bus for the for this activity. So we'd want to leave a, a few hundred in our our budget, you know, for that, okay. but um, I think that's probably doable. Okay. Were there other questions? I think on the, uh, uh, on your bus, is a cat available? You know, the Columbia uh, River, you know, the bus oh. system, is that, uh, you know, mm. would that help out on something like that, or is that? I don't know if they would or not. I, I know that, um, trying to find a Hood River bus driver to come in down and do 
uh, do the activities, it's not, it's not uh, working because it's too far. You know, just it does, that just doesn't work. And we have to have a Hood River bus driver because they let us use the bus free. Well, we, we, we barter with the school. The city does plowing at the school and things, and blackberry bush cutting and things. So they kind of have a bartering system for the use of the bus. But, okay. I, but I, could check in, I could check into the cab. I, I kind of doubt it. Okay. But I could check into it. I mean, it's, it's, I think that it's, it's definitely worth checking into. It's a regional mm -hmm. service that is perhaps underutilized here. Um, but yeah. it, it's, uh, it's available to our community. Mm -hmm. This might be a way that we can serve. So. I'll check into that. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? Paul, were you anticipating other um, boards or commissions to be here? We invited everyone, so I think this is all you have, that's all you have. Okay. Mayor, I'd just like to add that the museum committee did call and say that they didn't uh, see any additional needs or, or have any additional programs, so they just want to let you know that they weren't going to be attending. some recreation stuff happening there with the, the easy climb mountain biking trail. Um, there's something called Blackberry Beach for windsurfers. How, how do you do that? Well, I, you take Forest Lane, you know, the Bear Mountain, and then you turn down Cranbow Lane. There, there's a yeah. sign uh, right where you turn off at. There's a sign at uh, Blackberry Beach, and there's an arrow pointing oh, really? in that direction. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean that's I don't think there's anything set up for for swimming and, and oh. family type usage right now, but it's like, certainly a, a something that could become mm -hmm. uh, part of a conversation with the court. Mm -hmm. I think that with with the types of things that they're putting in there, that would really fit. Mm -hmm. so. I think a, 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 a easier fix to that is asking the port to designate just a small swim area in where the sailing's at, and that's designated period for swimming for everybody and it's just not when the sailors come in it kind of gets overrun it's mm -hmm. that allows for multi-use and I think that would be better served because Blackberry Beach is not a place you'd want to go swimming because mm -hmm. of the rocks yeah. and boulders it's yeah. no you're out in the main channel out yeah. in Columbia I, so I guess some but there's other but I guess but my point yeah. is that there's, they're, they're looking at there's yeah. other there, I mean there's a lot of different um, spaces out there mm -hmm. not necessarily Blackberry Beach because that's set aside for windsurfing but um, in some of the coves and things that there might be something yeah, that'd be nice because sometimes the boat is getting a little aggressive with the people who are trying to swim. Yeah. Yep. Um, once, I don't know if you get down there, but one suggestion you might look at is the uh, there at Herman Creek, mm. where it runs in, mm -hmm. because there is a you know a walk drop off, but the initially the water is kind of shallow. You know, I don't know. Place to take the kids. I wouldn't take. That's where I take my dog. Oh, <laughs> I wouldn't take any kids like this, like what we have down here. I don't swim, and I won't take them to do anything I can't do. So, but I was thinking family, family related things. Yeah, yeah. I would never take. I would never take this bunch swimming. <laughs> They'd lose me.
uh, right. Along the same lines, uh, I've been down there a couple of times, and I think it was initially put in for sale borders. Uh, yes. Unfortunately, the ramp is incredibly steep and rough, so to carry board down that thing would be very difficult. And at low water, when you get down there, it's a jumble of rocks, so it's very difficult to launch. It's not a good place to swim. And there are no porta potties, as you pointed out, and there's no garbage cans out there. Now, those are two things that could easily be taken care of. Uh, the launching of uh, uh, boats or swimming uh, it, it, it is a little more difficult. But as you pointed out, there are other places that could be developed out there on the other side of that peninsula. Uh, there's a nice bay over there. Yeah, and I just want to clarify, we don't have any plans to put in a swimming facility in the port's property at this point. It was These are just some ideas that were being generated because there's the, the, the big topic was brought up that, that, you know, combining sailing and swimming has been difficult. But that's, you know, it's up to the port, uh, and we want to work with the port to help uh, when we can. But right at this point, there, there are no plans um, to put in uh, swimming facilities. Uh, so in the fourth property. So um, with that, I think we'll move to our next agenda item, uh, which is the staff presenting ideas and priorities for the budget. So uh, we want to, of course, thank the staff for coming in on their weekend. And uh, Paul, I think we'll we'll start with you. Yeah, I want to call special attention to Mary Ann because I don't think she even went home. But <laughs> well, Gail and I were here late last night. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Don't be starting things, Gail. <laughs> I did mean it that way. <laughs> I, I placed at your uh, seat there a copy of the proposed multifaceted economic development concept that we're hoping council will adopt Monday night when you establish the subcommittee on economic development. And on the Three succeeding pages is a listing of your current priorities uh, so that you can refer to those. What we did, and this may mean that Gail and Jeff and Randy may want to move over on the side because I put all of the staff materials up on this wall. We, I took the staff back to the original set of Some of these issues are resolved, some of them have, are in the process, uh, many of them are being held off until the 2012-15 budget, but from a public work standpoint, uh, we've reviewed these and we've added some because as we go through the operation and deal with some of the issues that we're facing, we're discovering new problems and issues that also need to be looked at from a council perspective. The, the operation of the sewer treatment plan, of course, you've already approved an extension of the five-year contract, so OMI will run your sewer treatment plan. The comprehensive public work staffing plan will be included in the 2012-13 budget proposal. Uh, 
the comprehensive water and wastewater plan, the collection and treatment piece we think is much more important now because of the Nestle potential, the economic development potential that the community has and needs to create more aggressively. Uh, and then we have leakage and health issues in the water system. So from the staff standpoint, the need to do a comprehensive update to know what do we have and how do we approach that. Um, public Works staff has been working on some leak problems. Um, I mean, the numbers, what are the numbers, Dave, in terms of how much water we actually sell and how much gets run through the system? You pumped about 10 million gallons in the last month and sold 2.8, the rest is from the leakage. About 150 gallons a minute. We fixed three this last week, probably 10 gallons a minute. Been in a 1,200 foot section in Maine. We've still got another 10 gallons a minute. We, we've basically been able to isolate it from the Dry Creek Reservoir and watch the droppage on the reservoir and able to tell what we what we accomplished and gained. There's a whole lot of steel mains in the system, and the steel mains were installed in the 50s and 60s, and they rust from the inside and outside both. So that's that's a big problem. And Paul's got on there as far as asbestos pipe. You do have asbestos pipe in the system. If you had asbestos with lead fittings on it, you'd have a big problem. Asbestos is not commonly considered a health hazard for as far as drinking water supply. It's considered a health hazard for the guys that are working on it. So the guys have to be properly trained and certified in order to be able to cut and deal and fix asbestos pipes. But um, we did microscopic particle counts a year ago, December, for asbestos. And the purpose behind that is, is that the pipes are eroding you turn around and get little fibers that can be inhaled in a hot shower. And I'm pleased to report that you had no asbestos showing up on any of this report. So, so from that standpoint, the bad part with it is that even with rubber gasketed asbestos, it can blow a gasket so fast and you can lose so much water. I mean, you can drop a whole reservoir in a matter of hours as far as that type of pipe. And you have about 800 feet of it coming off of Right to reservoir, 10 inch. So there is some definitely for some main replacement. The, the other issues from a public works perspective still on the list of the street maintenance plan. We still are of the opinion that we can do much of that in house, uh, but we would have to contract out to get somebody to come in and measure the, the quality of the paving or the um, rating of the streets. And then we have equipment and vehicle maintenance replacement program, and you're going to see that in the proposed budget for all of the departments. What do you currently own? What's the life expectancy or how far past expected life is your equipment? And what's our schedule for replacement? And then there's the need for a new one-ton uh, truck in the Public Works Department. I'm just going to run through these, and then we can just kind of sit, and the department heads can talk to you this and hopefully the citizens will jump in here too. On emergency services, fire and ambulance, as you're aware, you currently have created a public safety task force made up of citizens and they are going through a process of determining what is the desired service level in the community. Then Mary Ann and I will put some numbers together so we can see how much does that cost. Uh, the, the, the task force is having their first public meeting on February 20th at the pavilion. Uh, so they are moving along. Uh, and my observation is that there's some, some very good discussions going on there. So that's, that's what needs to be considered. And remember, Council, that your direction to them is to report back in 90 days, which would be about mid-April. So that will come in during the budget, early in the budget process. City of Light Department, uh, the tier two rates, as you've discussed before, is a critical issue. Uh, you will act on the uh, request for proposals uh, on Monday night. So based on previous discussions with council, we now have a, an RFQ proposal. If you approve that, we will advertise for firms to come in and work with us to determine what are the current rates? How do they relate to current revenue and current conditions in the electric service? How do we how do we layer tier two in there? 
what do we do about substations, and how do we structure a rate system that encourages economic development. And that's all a part of the RFQ. I believe that the port is going to partner with you in the cost for that, uh, that work to be done. Replacement of aging equipment. Um, initially, the budget proposed uh, the bigger derrick. We postponed that because we have a greater need for the man lift. That is also on your agenda for Monday night. Uh, completing an electric system plan is still there. The regulatory response is still there. Repayment of the fire station loan is still on the list. Uh, the work order system and that, Marianne, when will that work order system come into the computer? Well, we have training in mid-April. Uh, Cassell will be out here to train us and then once we are trained, then it's a matter of time to get the data into the computer and get it working. So that, that's in process. And then the new item that was added is a staff transition plan. So we, we think we need to begin thinking about Tracy's retirement and there's some other folks who are going to be leaving the department. We need to plan for those transitions so that they're smooth and effective. Martha, did you have a question? In terms of finance, uh, HR, and, and IT, information technology, and this is Mary Ann's area, closing out the FEMA grants is still on the list, uh, and we are processing that, I would guess, probably within 30 to 45 days at most. We'll have all of the data together. Uh, I'm in communication with FEMA on a weekly basis, and Chief Wells is helping us also on that. Study the implementation of electronic payments is still on the list. Outsource utilities, uh, we met with a firm this past week, uh, so we can begin to tell you how that would work, what the savings are. It seems to me that this, the current way that we put together the utility bills and mail them uh, diverts some, some very good staff people from more important work. So. Uh, this will continue. City Hall facility repairs are still there. Uh, the RFP for a new collection agency is still there along with the workload study and staffing patterns. That will come in with the proposed 2012 budget and review and update the workout policy uh, for late and slow pay customers. Those are still on the list of things that need to be done. <coughs> <coughs> administration, this is the, the city recorder, the comprehensive plan and development code updates as we have talked before, your current development code is, does not encourage economic development. So we need to take a look at that. We'll be coming to you in a couple weeks with a recommendation to sit with a couple firms and decide who do you want to have do your development review. As you know, the, your current contractor is retiring soon and he's encouraging us to find somebody else to do that work. Is it, we have three proposals, Kathy? Yes. I, we have three proposals, and we'll be coming forward to have you take some action on those. The need for a deputy recorder, uh, permanent contract for the planner, and that relates to the RFQs that we are currently out on this curve. We have received um, correcting the water ordinance. That will come to you later in February. We finally have a corrected water ordinance that will be kicked back to you for approval during February. You still have a problem of codification, surplus properties, uh, and then we have the problem of the speakers, the microphones, the cameras uh, in this facility, and we'll have a recommendation for you at your last meeting in February. This is the list uh, that I first did uh, when I came in, and you'll see that I've updated it somewhat. Uh, the sale of the old fire station, uh, Monday night you'll be asked to authorize that appraisal. The, the steps of, for selling the property or even considering to sell the property begin with what's the value so that we can sit down with somebody and say sell it and this is what it's worth. Uh, so that would be the first step uh, and you'll be asked to approve that uh, on Monday night. Martha.
about these phrases. I know it's worth a hundred thousand more. I don't care. It doesn't matter. You might have but they may overappraise it a couple hundred thousand if you don't want it. So be careful. Right. Good but point. Why don't you just get the brokers to give you opinions without paying for the phrases? <coughs> the second is response to the audit concerns. On February 27th, your auditor is going to be here and he's going to report to you that the financial condition of the city as well as your processes. We have asked him to take specific look at segregation of funds, all of the GASB stuff, so that when you get a report, he will be able to tell you if you're in compliance with state law or not. If you're not, then we'll have to fix that. Uh, resolving the issues around the fire department, and as you know, we're in the process of rebuilding the department. You have longer range issues that you have to deal with that your task force is currently working on and we'll have recommendations for you. Uh, cooperation and collaboration with the port, that's a part of the economic development strategy uh, that you've adopted and we're hoping that when you create your subcommittee on economic development and adopt the uh, multifaceted approach that in, on March 1st, that the Port Commission will do the same, and then we can begin working those two groups together to begin developing a, a better strategy for economic development. Monthly financial reports are pretty much done. You receive those from Marianne on a monthly basis, and you have time to discuss that with her. Uh, policy direction and job descriptions, we're still working through that. Uh, reviewing all fees and charges, those will come in in conjunction with the 2012-13 budget. The casino is on here, and I think you're all aware that's pretty much being pushed to the back burner because of the, the federal and state uh, situation. Uh, cost reduction strategies, and then getting rid of uh, surplus items, and that was something that Kathy had pointed out. I've added since now, I put that list together, a couple of others. The need for a backup generation, in one of the recent emergencies we had, City Hall was down for uh, about 12 hours. So Marianne is doing some research and will be coming back with a recommendation as to how to solve that. And then the, the, the corporate maintenance yard uh, needs to have some, somebody take a serious look at that because that needs to look better, function better, and if we buy a new bucket truck, it's very conceivable that we'll have a very expensive piece of property or equipment that's gonna sit out in the open, and that doesn't seem to make much sense. So more covers and higher would be better. And so that's, that's what I had. I threw the initial uh, multifaceted economic development uh, approach diagram up just uh, so that you would have it in front of you, and then Betty could show that on TV also, so the community could begin to understand where we think we need to go as a community to develop jobs and economic development. So, Council, what I would suggest now is that we just kind of open the floor and let's talk about some of these issues with, with the intent that at the end of this session, you will have, and I've got some blank sheets of newsprint ready to go, that you will have a list of priorities uh, after hearing the citizens, uh, the departments, and the boards and commissions, so that when we begin to develop the budget in the process that you've adopted, we know what the priorities are and we can begin to move you in that direction. Thank you. start off while we're waiting. Just for general 
comments or what were you? General discussion and ultimately, uh, I mean, I think right now we're just wrapping up the, the staff portion by um, you know, whatever questions we have. And, um, and then at, at some point, as those questions get answered, as discussions get resolved, then we move to developing a list of our budget priorities based on what we've been presented with um, so far today. So, Gail? Uh, a couple things. One on the leaks. Um, now, I don't want to sound too cynical here, but loss of water. It's that kind of guy. <laughs> loss of excess water doesn't cost us any money, right? Wrong. It costs you pumping costs as well as it costs you chlorination. I don't agree with you. Plus it costs you in the long run because not only do you have a risk of contamination, it can create health issues, but you also turn around and have pipe that is going to deteriorate. Leaks don't turn around and get better than And the cost of replacement or repairing those leaks goes up and up. Okay, no, it's good. So it does. It costs you all the way around. So of our leaks that you're aware of, is the biggest one, biggest concern, the one you talked about? Um, the, the biggest concern I have right this minute is the 6,000 foot of 10 inch line that's coming from Dry Creek, basically down and over towards the Ruckel Street area. Because that's on a hillside. Yeah. And severe leakage on a hillside like that can saturate the ground to the point where the pipe gets wet. That's one of the concerns I've got with the asbestos, and not an erosion problem in there, but asbestos only comes in 10 foot lengths. So every 10 feet, you've got two couplers that can leak. And it allows for ground movement at that point, and you can actually have the whole thing move away. I don't want to see that happen. Okay. And I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm going to put you on the spot. Go ahead. Um, thinking, you know, smaller than a pig and bigger than an elephant, what, what would you estimate the cost to be? As far as replacement goes? Yeah. On that 10 inch line, you're probably looking at about 50 bucks a foot in order to be able to have it done. So 6,000 feet, $300,000 in order to be able to replace it. It's not an in-house project by any means. Um, I, I just received a quote in the, in the Dow Fort Water District for um, replacement on a 10 inch line, and it was at $40 a foot, but it was all sand. That's a lot, got a lot of rock in between it up there. So that's why I'm saying I, I'm suspecting I run that. Cost of pipe alone is around 17 bucks. Is, is that the type of problem or type of issue that we might qualify for some grant? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. That's the reason that I feel like that a comprehensive water plan is what you need. Um, I, I've dealt a lot over the years. Lance and I were talking about it before the meeting. And with grants, funding, all of that kind of stuff. And, and I think that that's probably part of the reason I'm down here. In order to be able to turn around and help with some of that, I would hope so anyway, because I enjoy doing it. But if you don't have a plan, there's nobody going to give you any money. It, it's just flat out that simple. And Cascade Locks had a water plan that was started on by Wallace Engineering back in like 2005. But you guys haven't had an update for as far as a water system plan in about 20 years. And you're supposed to have one every five. Okay. So, it, you know, a water system plan will turn around and generate funding. Then you can go to Public Works Trust Fund. You can go to Department of uh, Human Services and ask for grant loan applications. So what have you done to solve that problem? Do what? What have you done to address that? To address what? The, uh, the, the loan plan and getting the grant? When Rich was here, I wrote an RFQ for as far as engineer services because you're going to have to have a PE to turn around and do that. And we talked with Wallace at that time and what they were talking about was not really a comprehensive water system plan. They were talking about looking at the, um, the SDC charges and a steady update for that. And they were talking 27000 over it. And I told Rich, I thought that was a ridiculous price. You could get a water system plan done for that kind of thing and that he should go out for an RFQ for engineering qualifications. So I wrote the RFQ for it. But since then, there's been changes and back and forth. And Paul and I were just talking about that the other day. It, that's the first step. You guys turn around and prove an RFQ. We go out and find somebody and let you conduct the interviews and select who you want to be able to do some stuff. Big important note of that is, is that you get an engineering firm that will work closely.
closely with the Public Works Department in order to be able to do so. And it's going to save you a whole lot of money in order to be able to do it that way, rather than just saying, hey, this is what we need, come do it for us. But what they look at is hydraulic analysis, and that's one of the big costs on it. Um, water rights, um, the needs, economic development, growth needs, um, age of infrastructure. And being able to put all that together, I mean, that's what you've got to have to turn around and say to the state, we need it. Okay. So when would we be getting the RFQ? When would you like it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, if, if I can jump in here, Gail, I, I, I wonder if this is a question uh, we can answer here. Do we have um, do we have money budgeted for, for this fiscal year for that type of a thing, or is it something that um, needs to be put off until the next fiscal year if we can find the funds for it? Our approach so far, Mayor, has been to put it off as if it's a high priority, it will be included in the next year's budget. So there's not money in this fiscal year's budget to take care of our well, Mary Ann will probably shoot me, but I think if you really wanted it now, we could find the money. You're right, I will. Talking time in order to be able to turn around and develop a water system plan. I would say probably four to six months at least. And, uh, and then you turn around and present it to DHS in order for formal adoption of it. And then at that point, you can turn around and actually start hunting for funding. Um, I'll give you my most recent experience. 2009, we did a comprehensive water plan, plan for Dallas Water District. Uh, last year, I got funded for a new reservoir and booster pump station almost a million dollars at a quarter of a percent interest for 30 years. <coughs> um, we start construction in July, hopefully. We're having engineering design done on it right now. So, you know, it, it, there's a time frame in there. So when you turn around and talk about replacement of the water main and getting funding, you're going to have a stretch of time in there. Right now, what I told Sheldon yesterday when we turned around and discovered that we had about 10 gallons a minute more on this after fixing three leaks on it this week, as we go back through with the leak detector, and you might as well order a bag of boiler plugs in order to fix it because we can't afford $200 repair bands in order to put on every single week. So we're just going to do it as best we can, but we've got to try to cut it down. Yeah, and, and, and I wasn't suggesting we dive in and start repairing the pipe. I was more, you know, if, if we have a partially prepared document to start right. the next step, funding or no funding, you know, sending the RFQ out doesn't mean we fund it at that time. That's all, we just size the problem. So, if we're that close, instead of talking about it, look the result. Right. Jeff? What I heard you say with the Dallasport project, um, we could be 18 months out right. by the time we got at least somebody sniffing around looking at a grant for funding. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then, as far as grants go, um, the grants typically nowadays, because there's been so much scale back on them, is for as far as low income. And so if you can turn around and show low income in a specific area of town, and one of the places that I work with is RCAC, Rural Community Assistance Corporation, you come in and have them do a low income survey. It's gotta be a third party that's independent from any interest of the city or the port or anything like that in order to be able to do it. They will sometimes do it for free, um, you know, ours was a ten thousand dollar thing, but they we got a grant for the entire thing in order to be able to turn and have them do that income survey. And I would think that you could probably do that as well and just talk to the people there. Yeah. But you pick a specific area of town and you go, hey, the water's failing here, the streets are failing here, the sewers failing here. There's no money to be able to do an LID. There's no money to be able to fix it. We feel that this area is low income and we want to turn around and have some improvements. And you target that area. Adopted by an ordinance resolution, and then you turn around and go to these guys and say, Hey, you know, we're working with them, of course, all the time to be able to get them in there. You get a study done, and then you can apply for grants. Community Development Block Grant does a great job for as far as that kind of thing goes, and I've done several of them there. They're very, very good at that. Mark? On the uh, grant funding, uh, does the whole system have to be? Uh, improved or can you do <coughs> sections at a time with the grant money? You can do sections at a time. Yeah. Okay. You, a, a big thing too is a driving force for as far as um, DHS has one that they call, it, it's a loan, but it's a principal forgiveness loan for
for a low income area. And if you have something that is a health risk there, then you have something that can target that. So, um, you know, that, that's a biggie too. I'm very, very glad to say that we don't have a health risk yet on anything that we've tested for. And one of the big concerns that I have with any steel pipe, and I've seen this before, is it starts to leak tetrachloroethylene out. And we turned around and have tested twice for that in the last year, and uh, we haven't encountered anything. So we're, we're good as far as safety of our lines go. It's just that they're deteriorating and they're leaking. And so with the newer lines, uh, you would have less sections then because the newer lines are a lot longer. To right. Exactly. Exactly. You still need to turn around and target, you know, as far as, and, and that's where a water system plan once again comes in. If you've got, you've got a scope of work on the entire thing. You've got a cost estimate for as far as different sections, as far as you can see what it is. And you'd also have a breakdown from as far as from the field experience that the crew and, and I gather. It turns around and comes into play in that too that says, hey, this is how much leakage we're going to reduce by eliminating this. And all of those factors add in. You, you've got to be able to build the plan and be able to sell your case. And the other question I had for you is, you said this had to be contracted out. Why couldn't we try to figure out a way to... You know, you don't have that manpower. Well, let me, let me finish my comment first. <laughs> is that use the resources that we have available, staffing that we have available, and then bring other contractors in and still that help them offset some of the costs that way. Well, I mean, as, yeah, as far as, I mean, we can help with that kind of thing. But there's also a level that you have to turn around and go to bid on. And I believe it's $200,000. So you're, ha you're having to turn around and actually bid the work as far as um, you have a small work item. I want to say it's ten. Two hundred thousand. So you can turn around and look at quotes on. At the two hundred, you have to turn around and do formal bid. So you're going to have an actual bid document with everything in it. Going to be able to turn around and do it. And that once again, I, like I say, it's going to be um, it's going to be a contracted project. And if you have any federal funds into it, then of course wage wise for a contractor, you're talking Davis Bacon for as far as wages go. If you have uh, just state funds, then you're talking prevailing wage. There are other opportunities that you have also to pay for some of this. <coughs> Senator <coughs> Berkeley is going to be in town on the 21st at 1.30. Uh, I, I don't know where you all sit in terms of earmarking or not, but I can guarantee you there are many communities who are meeting with their legislative delegations back in D.C. and saying, hey, we need 200000 bucks. Get it for us. That's one way. The other thing we know from the state is the state has a number of programs, but as Dave points out, Dave, the quite first question is, what is your plan? So the plans that we have are not going to be sufficient to pass muster. So you do, you do need to deal with that whole water and sewer system as a whole at some point. And we can break it up into pieces. that, you know, what I'd like to see, if, if, and I think the public would want to see, is if we have issues like that, what's our steps and schedule in a sequence that is going to move us forward to a point where we can uh, go out for bid or solicit grants. If we have prerequisites, we should be addressing the prerequisites to move forward in a tangible manner with some defined time frame. I'm sure we could put together something that shows you the step by step of how this could go and, and the possibility of a time frame on it. Okay. I mean, I, I don't think do it just for me. I'm just saying, I think. But I'm hoping we could start on the process and then as we budget, you know, as the budget hits, then we'd be ready to right. hire the firm to do the study. So yeah. I can tell you too that I've kind of talked to some engineers that I know because I, I work with a lot of people up and down the board. And uh, you know, low side of it, I got a quote the other day about twenty five thousand going to be able to do a water system plan. That was without a conservation plan for the city, which is also required under Oregon law, which I, I'm suspecting you probably don't have because of the time frame in here. But that we might be able to turn around and pull in the engineering water right document that was done for the port in order to be able to help with that so that's a lower cost. So I'm going to tell you a water system plan will probably run between 25 and 40,000. 
25 the other day, I was pretty excited about it because it's somebody that I've worked with before. But, uh, it's, you know, it, it, it's out there. You have to turn around and kind of shop. One bad thing is when you do your RFQ, you're turning around doing it on the ability to be able to meet your timeline and everything else. You're not doing it for as far as big cost on professional services. So. Okay. I'm to elaborate a little bit on another step of that, and that is the wastewater plan. Um, yes, you've got a contract with our now, and uh, um, we plan on managing that contract a lot better in order to be able to protect the city's interests. And there have been some improvements made already as far as like the repair of a automatic control valve that never works in final still. And I'm sure that everybody's heard that your plan is way over capacity, and that's true. That is correct. But we've already had a tech memo done as well by an engineer. Um, looking at what the solution could be, because you are under a mutual agreement order from DEQ on total suspended solid violations for that plan. And he came up with a list as far as, okay, well, these are the steps that you should be able to take. Short-term, long-term, intermediate. DEQ's brought off on it. They said, hey, we'll drop this order against the city. If you're talking to us about proceeding with as far as the general sewer plan and evaluation of wastewater plan by July of 2012. So we're kind of in that area right now <coughs> that we need to turn around and be thinking about that too. Um, part of the problem is that one of the intermediate steps in there was um, changing the decant rate on the plant, which is basically skimming off the clean water and sending it through for as far as treatment. Currently, OMI operates it with as far as once a day to do that. Engineer's recommendation is two to three times a day. It's going to make it where you don't draw as much of the um, suspended material. They can't do that under their existing contract, really, because their contract is basically their man's going to be there for a couple hours a day. That's all. They don't have enough time in order to be able to do it. So Paul and I talked this last week about as far as getting together and meeting with DEQ and OMI and discussing how we're going to proceed in order to be able to make this tech memo work. Because DEQ has already said, we will help you guys to fund the plan. You're willing to start talking to us by July as far as how you're going to accomplish this goal and make everything fit in. So once again, I think it's probably our place to turn around and provide you guys with a time frame of what we're doing with it, but to make you aware that there's going to have to be some planning done for that wastewater plan as well. Your plan's also 15 years old. At 20 years, DEQ requires upgrades on any plant. So that plant actually, because of the sizing of it, I'm thinking that what you're going to be eligible for is an energy grant from the state of Oregon to be able to update that plant so that it operates more efficiently with the amount of flow that it's got. So I, I really believe that, and talking with DEQ, they believe that as well. You made a statement that said you're over capacity. In my mind, that says that we're beyond our capabilities. Is that my reading, hearing what you said wrong? <laughs> or we're under capacity where we've got too big a plant, not enough? Yeah, you, you've got way too big a plant. Okay, but we have a big enough yeah, plant that for plant future development. Yeah, for about 480 gallons a minute of flow, and you have about 38. We have, <laughs> we have a plant that's enabled to do sustained future development in our community. Oh, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Right. I mean, you could take casino, all the growth and development you could probably do within the city and feed that plant, and it would be great. It would operate actually a whole lot better than what it is right now. Okay. But right now, um, what happens is the amount of solids that come into that plant, there's not enough to really be able to um, digest properly, and so a lot of it turns around and dies. And when it dies, it turns around and floats up into the effluent you're trying to skim off. Catch it, send it out into the river, and total suspended solids violation. And I mean, um, really, it's seven thousand dollars per shot. As far as if they turn around and started right now, a certificate after three, it's going to jump to like fifty thousand dollars per violation. So when we met last summer, we decided it was in the best interest of the city to turn around and do a tech memo as far as having an engineer that does nothing but treatment plants come in and look at this thing, and then put forth a plan to DEQ of this is how we're going to address it. And OMI was in on it. Um, Doug was there and the operator was there and, and we were able to turn around and work things out. So I'm thinking we can have a good, healthy re relationship with this with going forward, but there are going to have to be some, some changes in there that are approved by DEQ to make it happen. And there is going to have to be some planning done for the future. But 
we're on, I would rate a water system plan number one, probably your wastewater would be coming in there pretty close to number two. Yeah. You know, your, your statements about the limitation of OMI staffing or resources given the current contract, it kind of disturbs me because we just approved the contract. You, you approved the contract. So it was why, very nice to have it with as far as that you've got an out clause. No, but why wouldn't that issue address as a part of the new contract? Time. As who's, far as who's well, time? And, and in part we did, Gail, because we locked them into meeting with us, reporting with us, and working with us in a way that hadn't been done before. So as Dave talks, we're, we're now getting ready for a joint meeting with the EQ to begin to figure out how do we begin to resolve some of these issues. Whereas before they were apparently were just ignored. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so earlier the comment was made that the city's overcharging our enterprise funds. And I'm just wondering if you could report that if you feel like you're being overcharged by or the, the city. Or the, you mean it? Actual rate, that type of thing, as far as I don't think that's what the comment was. I think the comment was the um, payment in the franchise fee or, or something like that, but uh, it wasn't a specific comment. But I just wanted to, and I'm going to ask us all the department has is, is there a sense that the, the city is overcharging you to run these services? I guess I'm not quite following that as far as. Do you ask me as far as cost-wise, cost comparison, for as far as up and down the Columbia Gorge? I look at the Cascade Locks, and I look at the, the revenue, I look at the SDC charges here, I look at your rates here, and it's very, very low compared to everywhere else, as far as that part goes. Okay. Um, there is a requirement under Oregon state law for enterprise funds to turn around and have to be able to sustain themselves, and water water, providing the service to your customer, not growth for expansion, that kind of thing as far as economic development, but your cost of maintaining that system has to turn around and be able to be supported in as far as the rate system goes. But I think your question there has to do with, and probably Tracy and Dave, are the, is the assessment made by the city for, to your department, is, is that fair, is it equitable? <coughs> How much do, we, do these do Help. enterprise funds departments pay to the city oh. for management services? Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, there's, can I step in there? There's, there's two parts to that. Uh, I've been around here long enough to understand the current budget pretty well. And uh, uh, the, the number one part, and I think that's the biggest portion that was discussed earlier, was uh, not the administration cost, but the amount of money for franchise fees, uh, or in lieu of tax, however you want to label that. And uh, you know, I've I've looked at a lot of other uh, uh, cities, et cetera, et cetera, and uh, I feel as as a department head for 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 two enterprise funds that the that the franchise fees are completely in line with what's going on uh, throughout the state of Oregon and other states too, as far as that. So uh, this uh, franchise fee for based on sales or, or income at I believe it is five percent currently uh, I think is a is a uh, 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 equitable fair uh, assessment. Um, uh, the other the other portion you're talking about about fees uh, that's that's inside each budget for uh, administration cost uh, that that's a different story. I mean, it, it, I, I'm not saying that it's that it's unfair or anything else there, but it's a different part of that uh, 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 mathematical problem, so to speak. And uh, uh, you could you could discuss that on ends on well, are you getting this? Are you getting that? And and really, as a as a as a working foreman, uh, it's hard for me to answer that question whether or not it's it's correct or not correct. Uh, but as far as the 5% and that, 
that that's what was in, adhered to over here earlier at the beginning of the meeting. That's perfectly equitable in my mind. Okay. And as far as the administrative costs, um, I, I'm understanding you to say that you don't have an answer about whether that's. I I, I, I don't have an answer. I because I have. If, is there a sense that you're being overcharged? No, I, there, there's no sense that we're being overcharged. At least as far as in the in in the power side, I mean, there might be a sense uh, on the on the communication side that, that there's more money there than needs to come out. But uh, as, on the power side, uh, no. Uh, but then again, I haven't sat down and looked at percentages and or comparisons with other municipalities our size that have this kind of uh, uh, system. I mean, you know, there's only a few, there's about 11. Uh, you know, so I haven't sat down and said, well, hey, uh, let me let me crunch numbers with you here. But uh, currently in my mind, there, there's nothing out of the ordinary there. Uh, you know, you, we, we pay so much for a billing clerk and so much for the administrator and so much for each person that's up there. And and uh, just off the top of my head, I, I think that's a fair, a fair assumption. And, and so, I, same and question. I, I, I understand now what you were asking. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I agree. It, it, is, it is a very fair number, I believe. Um, I've seen it work this way in other communities. I've also seen it where, as far as if they, they basically built a public works administration sign out where they, you know, they turn around and find all the big all activities out of that portion of it and just pull a little bit from water, sewer, and everything and basically make it a separate line item. But, but no, I think that around here, this is, it is very equitable as far as what this. Okay, so there's no sense that you're being overcharged. I would say. One, one, one. Yeah. Can I say one more thing? Sure. Uh, and this, this goes beyond uh, 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 public uh, entities being charged. Well, what, what I'm trying to say is, private en en entities doing business in big cities or whatever cities have a franchise fee also, right. and uh, it would not be fair. Uh, in any sense, to uh, to not charge that franchise fee to each enterprise fund, because then they would be able to operate operate cheaper, not allowing any competition. To you're you're kind of creating a monopoly there. Oh <laughs> wait a second here. Uh, no, nah, you don't need any franchise fees to pay here because uh, uh, the guy's brother-in-law works for Portland General Electric and overbuild us. You know what I'm saying? So you know. Every private fund has enterprise funds too that go to whatever city that they're operating in. So yeah, and, and I think you're, you're putting your finger on the, the exact reason why the state legislature passed a law like probably 20 years ago now requiring municipal utilities to make payments in lieu of franchise fees so that there was a competitive, uh, you know, an equal playing field. And so there's actually a state law that requires these payments. It doesn't require a certain specific percentage. That's up to that's correct. That's up to the city. Just like it would be if there was a private utility, it would be up to the city to, to determine what the payments were. And and the percentage that's used currently is pretty much in line with the percentages used throughout the state. As you know, it's, it's, sure. it's, it's not out of line whatsoever. Sure. I, Ashland is much higher. Hermiston is a little bit lower. The last time I checked, which was at least at least a year ago. Okay. Arnie, did you have a, a comment? You did it. Oh. We're, we're, we have to charge at least three and a half percent by state law, at least in the electric. I'll look into the other enterprise funds, but we don't get a choice. We have to. There is no upper limit. I did a little bit of research this morning. You might know. We read some emails. <coughs> Sounds to me like there's almost room to increase it. 
I was, I was a department manager, and uh, somebody that's looked at to explain why rates change, uh, I don't agree with that statement. <laughs> so I'll, I'll leave it at that. Yeah, I'm not sure I said the rates would change. <laughs> if, 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 if you start... I think that's another issue, though. Thing, yeah, if you start... Wanna, we don't need to intermingle the, right. the rate issue, but I do have a question for you about, about rates that I, hopefully we can get to. But... Um, I, I mean, and I, I wonder if um, if you look at that, you look at um, maybe our um, what could be looked at as a temporary need for revenue. We have you know, um, city assets that we're you know we're looking into to selling and so on. Is there is there room on a temporary basis um, for an increase in those in those rates rather than? what would be looked at as permanent, see? And so the difference there is a permanent, it, you have to include as part of the rate study. If it's a, if it's a temporary change, then, uh, you know, maybe maybe you get to, maybe you get to uh, what Gail's saying, where there's, there is a bit of room. I mean, certainly Ashland has, has found a way to do that. Um, Hermiston hasn't. And there's other smaller municipal utilities that have different variations. And the discussion in, in all of the states about these issues is very robust, much like the one that you have here, because these are controversial things, and people look, the customers look at that as maybe a misuse of funds or whatever. Now, if you were in the state of Washington, and we're hoping to do this in your program budget, when you do a municipal budget uh, with enterprise funds in the state of Washington, you have to carefully calculate how much of the city administrator's time of all of the support people will be spent. And when the state auditor comes in at the end of the year and audits, you have to have time cards in place that show, yes, the city administrator spent 7.2% of that position's time assisting that. I'm not suggesting that we go that far, but I think we need to begin to approach that so that the community has a better sense of confidence that these are the appropriate charges. Some of the other charges that cities make we're seeing really fall away. Many communities now in an attempt to create economic development are doing away with systems development charges. Those things become a barrier to economic development. Systems development charges, planning fees, all of that is now being tossed up in the air because people are trying to create jobs and economic development in the local community. Okay. So if, if I could then maybe turn to the, I have questions about the rate study that I just, I want to make sure, we're, I know we've, we've asked you these questions before and, and you've answered them before, but I just want to make sure that on the record that we get, we get clarity here. Um, so, so Monday night there's a uh, uh, an RFQ coming back for the, the rate, electrical rate study, um, and could you just maybe walk through some of the reasons why we're doing that in a maybe a brief brief review? Sure. Uh, related to the increase of costs to City Light sure. from our from from BPA rather than from the city. That, that's definitely one one point. Uh, uh, as of October uh, 1st, uh, we incurred a, just over 12 percent, maybe it's closer to 13, but a 12 point something percent rate increase from, from Bonneville Power Administration for our, for our preferred power costs. Um, so uh, to, to kind of put this in a nutshell, for instance, yes. uh, if you were to uh, figure that out over a year's period, uh, that's basically another sixty-five to seventy thousand dollars worth of purchase power costs. So uh, currently, uh, the way our budget's running now, we uh, had a rate increase back in two thousand and six with multiple other rate increases in line that never took place, and uh, during also during that that portion, uh, City Light basically went out and contracted a bunch of 
of dollars uh, bringing in more revenue through each one of the developments that went in and each and the, the South Bank project we actually made some money on two, two projects down there where we were working to upgrade our system but got paid to do it uh, from, from federal funds. And so uh, I don't see any big developments coming up. And in our budget period right now, we're at the top of the bell curve heading down, just starting to head down the other side. And now with your uh, uh, 60 to $70,000 increase per year, we are now going to be not operating in the red, we're going to be operating in the black. And of course, we do have a beginning balance that's that's substantial, so we could we could uh, 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 postpone a little bit, uh, you know, if we had to. But here again, we missed the rate increases before. We're on the bottom side, so I, I do think it's time and the fact that uh, you have the tier two, which we do not have anything in our rate schedule for tier two, and that's an issue. The other issue with it is in commercial. Uh, commercial power in our in our uh, current schedule, uh, we have a, a, a rate that is inflected with uh, so many uh, cents per kilowatt hour for the first fifteen thousand, and then so many cents per kilowatt hour for the next anything over fifteen thousand. Right now, uh, Bonneville's cost and that second. Second piece, this is not tier two, this is just in our own rate schedule. Those costs are almost the same. So now we're not making any money on anybody that's used over 15,000 kilowatt hours. We're just, we're just hanging there, supplying them the power, but, but not getting any profit or margin to put back into our system. And, and it's, not, it's not profit, right? It's and, a margin. And, and, and can you just talk briefly about the difference between those two? Okay, a profit would be uh, if you were going to, uh, um, well, as a public utility, you can't make profit, but there's nothing wrong with uh, making more money than you spend to increase your, your operating budget. Uh, certainly, uh, over the long run, you would want to level that out so that you could run on that and then take that down, keeping a, 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 a level operating beginning balance. Uh, it's impossible to keep it perfectly level because you're going to make more money and you're going to uh, uh, lose some money, not necessarily lose it, but spend more than your actually uh, revenues, and so you can't keep it perfectly level. So, so just to maybe, maybe put a, uh, a realistic picture on that for people, the, the margin that you're talking about is what we might use uh, for the, the man lift. That we need to Absolutely. Right. So those are costs. If you can't create that margin and your man lift goes out, then how are you going to get up to the wires to put them back up when the wind storms knock them off? Right? You, you need those margins in there built into your rates to, to save for equipment and to save for system upgrades uh, because your operating budget doesn't really pay for system upgrades, although we do do some system upgrades out of our operating budget each year. But bigger projects where you need a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars are not coming out of uh, your operating budget. They're coming out of what you save. So, so just to follow up on then this this longer discussion of rate study, we we had questions about uh, the reasoning for why we're doing a rate study. Is the reasoning to increase rates, or is the reasoning to uh, look at that diminishing margin? I, well, I, I, it's, it's not to increase rates if, if we wouldn't have to. Right. Uh, but sitting in my position, I can see that we're going down the, 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 the bottom slope of a bell curve. We're, we're heading into the por portion where we're going to be spending money, more money than we're, than we're receiving. So you have, to, you have to take that in consideration. But I think the biggest consideration is we have nothing for Tier 2 currently if we had a customer come in here and say, well, I, I want to build a, 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 an operation here, and I want two megawatts worth of power. And uh, we start serving them that two megawatts worth of power. We could end up with the possibility of uh, spending more for the power than we actually charge for the whole thing. 
And so that, that's a that's a no no. You, you you can't operate under that. So mm -hmm. we need to get that into our rate schedule. And as David mentioned earlier, there's there's state law that, that does not allow you to do that. I think so. Okay. I'm not a lawyer, so okay. I, I can't answer that uh, that statement. But yes, you you you. I, I think that there's guidelines there. I mean, I know for a fact that. You're going to operate in the in, in the red sometimes, and you're going to operate in the black sometimes. So uh, you, you're going to go down, but you can't keep going down, or you'll go broke. You know, and, so. and Paul, the, we do have our our attorney looking into that, don't we? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Tracy, you kind of hit on something important. And Lance was going down the route that I was going to ask a question about, but. Communication and rebuilding community trust is one of the things that we as a council want to do in this budget process is being open and transparent. For Dave and for you, I would ask when we come to the budget process, if that you can come up with a simple model to show people exactly what you just said, that some people may look like you're talking Greek to them, a simple model of not revenue in or this, this recouping costs and stuff like that. So when somebody asks a question, we can go, here's the pie chart, here's where it's at. This is why we do what we do, and it's not that we're raising rates because we have a study and we're looking to raise rates because that means it's an increase. There's a reason that we have to do that. You explained it really well to Lance, and I understood it, but you only have X amount of viewers right now looking at that, and then the message goes out that, oh, they're going to raise rates, and they're just going to raise rates to raise their rates, and they're going to, we have to pose whatever this is, these rate things, and make a, just think about it. We just have to put a message out there. I just come up with a simple model to show people what's going on. I, I would love to do that, but I don't know that there's a way to, to make a simple model. You're a, uh, you're a smart it, man. I bet you can do it, Tracy. I bet you can do it. And the fact that uh, uh, it, it really needs to be made by somebody that, that, that has more expertise in that portion of a model. You know, I'm the kind of guy that, well, hey, let's go put this pole in the ground. And, and I understand the numbers, but explaining those numbers to a group of people that especially don't want to hear those numbers uh, is, is very complicated. And I don't know that I have the expertise for that. But I understand uh, where you're coming from, and I'd like to be involved with that. Well, the rate study sh should include I, I, some of that related information. I think it will. Yeah. And, and Paul is a guy that's great at coming up with simple models for us. Look at that. <laughs> there, there, there is one. There's 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 are you charging the proper amount to stay in business over the long term? I would suspect that everybody in this community, including yourselves, would be madder than hell if five years from now you are out of the electric business because you went bankrupt. That's not unheard of um, in, in all of these enterprise funds. There's a huge county in uh, down in the southeast part of the too big of a sewer treatment plant. They cannot pay the bonds back. This is where we're going. And what we're trying to do is to help you avoid that. So inside that RFQ is not only the rate study and what the rates ought to look like over the long term, but also if you are if you have foisted upon you a substation, what's the impact of that, as well as looking at what kind of rate structure do we need to have to generate economic development. And those are distinctly different issues than you're dealing with right now. Yeah. Uh, a couple things. Does the rate study, the rate study uh, include the situation we have regarding WIA? We can make it include that. Well, I think we should. Yes. And what I'm referring to, and you correct me when I misstate something, but right now, we have South Bank that has its, my term, full absorption costs that as far as the time is included in their rates, separate from the time that the city, that you, the staff has to spend on the city. But why the trimming and maintaining the 
right now paid by citizens because they're included in the city rate. And my, my preference would be, mine, would be that we have a city rate and we have a non-city rate at least. And I'm not saying that 60,000 ought to go to one house, but it ought to be, maybe it's a multi-year plan or something. Well, so there isn't a, a big hit, but I don't think the city rate should be including uh, entities outside the city uh, limit. Yeah. And, and the, what we did in the RFQ is to write it in such a way that the contractor that you select comes in and does a prescribed piece of work that we determined would not serve you. What we want is a contractor who would come in, sit with us and say, that let's now develop the scope of work so that all the things that you need are in there, and then we get that done. Okay. So will somebody make sure that piece is in there even if I am not here? You, you'll be here. You will. We're canceling all fishing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. I'll make sure that that gets don't, mentioned. Don't put the burden on me. I'll, I'll make sure that that gets mentioned. Right. So, Thank that's you. a valid point. Yeah. 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 Council, remember that the RFQ merely authorizes us to go out on the market and find firms who are willing to come in and do this work for you. You will select the firm. Now, Tracy and I are going to sit down and we'll do some, and Mary Ann, because she controls everything, we'll, we'll do some preliminary interviews screening, but you need to, in partnership with the port, because we think the port is going to pay for half of this cost. Yeah. It's critical for the economic development at the port that our electric rates, our water rates, our sewer rates are promoting economic development. So we've got to have that partnership, but that's where we're going to go. Yeah, I, I, I need to respond to that, because my, the way I look at we can have our rates, but if there's a development, I know a lot of cities throw carrots in, and for example, for a period of time, regardless of what our rates are, they offer a, a different rate for a defined period of time at cost, for example, or something different than our rates. Right. So I, 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 don't, I don't look at our rates as much as being geared to inducing development, where it's more to make the funds solvent. And then if we have a development, those are different negotiations. Right, and what we've wrapped in the RFQ is that very concept. Okay, fine. I just, okay. Go ahead. Mark? No, I was just saying that uh, I think we are uh, running blindfolded if we don't do the study. I think it's really hard to. Uh, uh, figure out your operating budget and everything else without the study. And I think that it's fair to the people that we, you know, have studies. So we can, if the rates go up or if they stay the same, I think we need to show the people that, um, you know, that we've done everything we can. And, and uh, but we still need an operating budget. We need to, you know, uh, uh, save for the future because you never know what's going to happen with the, with the cost. And, and in order to generate economic development, the rates, there has to be consistency. You need to businesses who may want to come here or businesses who want to stay here need to know is that consistent it can't it can't be like the federal government you, I mean you can't throw this stuff up in the air and then keep making these what for 60 days it's going to be this and that consistency actually works against economic development what's what's the opportunity for you is to build in that consistency so that you are more attractive it's not everything about economic development, but it is, it is an important piece that the city plays in economic development. The port needs to know up front when they go out and recruit, what are the rates? What are the deals? How far is the city willing to go? Now, if you're in Washington County, you take one of the biggest companies in the universe and no property tax on, on your equipment. Well, you need to be able to cut those kind of deals, and we're trying to get you in a position where you can predetermine where you're going to go, depending on how many jobs somebody's going to bring to you. Uh, Randy, and then we're going to have to take a break. Yeah. I, uh
Tracy had mentioned the account um, balance, and I think for years people looked at that as a gauge of the health of your department. Um, and you mentioned you did some outside jobs, and I know that you've gained on your account balance, but will the rate study kind of like lop that off and say this was a one-time gain irregardless of what your power rates were? If it was a one-time gain. I, well, I'll make sure that they that they look at that when, when we're discussing them. I mean, you know, I I ran those numbers on on what we what we've made through however you want to call it contracting or whatever, uh, doing work that a contractor might have done if a developer would have done that. Uh, and you know, it's it's close to two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Well, that was my second question. Over a four year five year period. Right. And so you know if you. If you look at uh, 2006 and uh, uh, you look at today and then take away uh, $250,000, that's where you would have been. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, right. and, and I always use that as the simple model that, that uh, 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 Mark's been, or Jeff's been talking about here. Uh, you can do that with the budget very simple. All you have to do is look back and see what the beginning, real beginning balance was. And you can see what you did that year. And you know you can see whether you went up, down, or or or, or stay even, and so that that's the simple model, the simplest model. But uh, you know it gets complicated after that as soon as you start talking about things there. But yeah. Well, I guess that was really the, you, you kind of took me to my point. It'd be unfair for that quarter million dollars to sit there and, and have the rate work against it, because to get that quarter million dollars, you didn't do something else. Exactly. Ma maintenance in your whole system, lines, poles, trimming, whatever, your guys were down there working, and just to have that not, or have that reflected in a lower rate doesn't allow that ever to get accomplished. And Yeah, you, you can't put it in there. The, the, the rate study people have to realize by looking at that figure that, wait a minute here, we had this, 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 and this that came in on top of, on top of electrical rates. You know, they're, they're talking about electrical rates, so they're, they're going to get that information that says, no, that 250 or whatever that dollar figure is exactly will be taken out of that scenario. It, the, other, the other point that's already been brought up in this economic development study is the power rates the Dalles has, that somehow that created economic development in the Dalles. And uh, Mark came from the Dalles and, and mentioned that they're paying a tax to buy power generation facilities. And we don't do that. And you're, you're able to have a cheaper power rate if your taxpayers are paying for some of that power through their property taxes. And just to say what our ta what our power rate is compared to the Dow's, I, I think we continually need to make that comment to people that, yeah, that they have a cheap rate, but they're, they have a higher tax to, to subsidize it. Well, uh, and, that's information that I, you know, I'm not privy to, so. So I don't, didn't know that exactly. Yeah, I, I didn't either. Something to the fact that I, you know, I've never investigated that. So, but yes, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> I have the same. We have the same problem all the time. Well, why is, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm continually trying to explain. Well, why does Kamania County uh, PUD or Hood River Electric Co-op pay a cent less than we do? I mean, we we just knock a cent off our our rates. Well, it doesn't work that way. There's there's that 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 thing that I'm calling margins in there. And with the way their rates are scheduled, they have bigger margins for the amount of power they sell because they sell five and six times the amount of power. So they have more more margins to work with to go against rates. And uh, we just don't have those kind of margins. But we, and, and a Nestle plant would, would help solve that. With, well, as long as we help, price the power it, it, it would help solve uh, uh, some of the problems uh, uh, Margins, maybe, because if you're going to be trying to bring in economic development, uh, you're going to be making the best deal for them to, to, to come in and operate here. And guess what? When they come in, they're a tier two. Uh, depending, I mean, my idea right now is tier two. Maybe the rate study people will say, well, no, you've got to do this. And you guys will be making that decision when they come up with the recommendations from, from the rate study. And uh, so, but currently, uh, we, we can't be selling them tier two power at three cents is it, or, or four cents. It's going to be a higher rate than, than uh, maybe as much as, as what we're uh, selling uh, commercial power for now. But if we do that, 
we get no margins. We have no margins, so we're not going to make any extra money on it. Right. Yeah, we got to price it right. Yeah. So, so people have to. It's it's a complicated issue. But even at tier two, the rates compared to other places probably isn't that bad, is it? I mean, it just depends. We we do not know what tier yeah. two is going to bring us because it's uh, the way that works is the moment we go into tier two, uh, Bonneville goes right out on the market, buys power, and sells it to us for their cost plus their 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 power set of fees or their margins. So uh, maybe, but uh, I I've had some conversations and and literally sat down and says, hey, I don't want to put you on the on the uh, uh, spot here, but what do you see would be the highest tier two rate over the next uh, you know ten years to speak of or five years anyway? And you know they don't they're pretty hesitant to answer that. We're very hesitant, but they're saying I just can't see it being you know much over seven cents. So if you're looking at that, and that's real close to what we're paying now commercially and 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 for residences, you know it's not that much more than you're paying, but you can't quite guarantee it like he's talking about. You know, so you, you it's hard to put that guarantee on there. So maybe some kind of a variable rate. Uh, because let's face it, if all of a sudden the market went to 14 cents and you're guaranteeing this person 7 cents and they're buying 2 megawatts, guess what? You just lost $200,000 in a two-month period. We can't do that. We don't have that kind of money. Okay, uh, I think we'll take uh, a short break here and we'll come back to finish up these discussions and then to start the development on the, on the list of priorities. Okay, so eight-minute break. Okay, just according to the list, I just want to say that uh, I guess I wouldn't really change any of those things. I think the needs are still there. I will say this past year, year and a half, first time in 17 years, I've been at the city where really the planning is almost non-existent. We do still have the people calling in about building permits and questioning foreclosure properties, those sorts of things, but no land use action cases. Uh, I do know the need with uh, updating our current plan has always been a difficult community development code. So that is, I mean, I think it's something that we seriously need to look at, especially if we're working on economic development and the ease of something happening here. And the prices we've got for that before has been, you know, $25,000, $40,000 to do that. I have no idea. And um, <laughs> record codification, as you know, we've looked at, but tried to budget for that the last several years, and I suppose the prices are going to continue to go up. So at some point, it's just something that needs to be done. Wait, which one was that? Uh, codifying the ordin oh, ordinances, yeah. having somebody look at all of those, and, and uh, saying, Continue. yeah, it's been forever. And then we've experienced some issues with, you know, a person not being here, a deputy recorder. We've plugged along without that, and I guess I just don't want it to be a message that that body is absolutely not needed because there have been issues with that. I think that Paul is the very rare interim city administrator where he does an excessive amount of work. And as I pointed out to him, when he is gone, the next city administrator is not going to do what he does. And it's going to increase the load on everyone else below that. So I don't want that. I don't want that need right. to go away. I mean, I just think you guys need to know that it's, I think it's a need. And don't forget it. Please don't forget it. And of course, we definitely want an upgrade of the, this system in here. As we know, that's been going on for years and years and years and needs some attention in that area. I think that's all I need to say. Questions about that? Yeah? When you talk about upgrades in here, you're referring to... 
camera, microphone. Yes. And I think that was up earlier. There the was going to be a plan to have that set. And how are we doing that? We're going to pull from the past studies and reports. I think there you have money budgeted this year to do that. I'll do some. We'll do some cost estimating and come forward with a recommendation for what could be done with the budget that you have. I do believe. I do believe the fork will help pay for it. Also, uh, one suggestion would be. You know, I went out to Best Buy and kind of. <coughs> saw what was available for both sound systems and recording. And, but they do have a commercial services section for free that would come in and do an assessment as well. Great. That's good to know. So if it's my problem, that's where I go first. If we were to get out of the city cable business, what need would we need for the audio and visual equipment? Where would that be at? On the website. So what what systems requirements would we need for that other than instead of live broadcast where it would be a, 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 a taped rebroadcast? If if in fact you could even do that if we got out of the city cable system. Would well, we, I what, think what, what requirements would be by law to have for a public meeting and have that recorded other than the digital and you doing the hand. There are no requirements for video. I know that, you know, technology, everything is going towards everything being on the website. And I haven't heard, I mean, what I've heard from council is, you know, we want to get those things on the website. So even without broadcasting live, I would think that probably the city would still want video and audio broadcast on the website, which there's still a camera and still a microphone. Okay. I, I think budget-wise, it probably needs to look, it's sort of a package. I mean, it's, you know, when you look at the um, the uh, city cable and then, um, you know, you look at the, uh, the camera and, and what's in here, uh, you know, either, um, I think there's a combination of uh, upgrades that we need to do in, in the budget, and I think we need to determine you know, if we, if we want to be in the, uh, you know, cable business or, uh, you know, maybe uh, that's the better route to go and, and uh, you know, go digital with a camera and, uh, you know, maybe do a YouTube and so people have access to it, you know, uh, 24 hours a day if they want to and, and so they can play back if they want. But I think um, technology, you know, like you said, changes so fast that, um, you know, I think we need to look at both uh, sides, the, the camera and the equipment in here and then also... Um, you know, our cable TV, so. Um. And, and I think with the, with the council's desire to do more community involvement and engagement and moving meetings around, uh, there's no need for you to be criticized for trying to do this in secret just because you want to have a meeting down at the pavilion. We ought to have a portable camera, and we ought to be able to move this stuff around so that everybody has access to everything. Yeah. I did want to, I guess I do want to add one more thing to my list, and it's just basically depends on council's wants or needs, but if there's any consideration of upgrading the website, those would be additional costs. Is our current bandwidth with the city internet, would that be able to facilitate having our meetings on the web? Because I understand we're, in talking with Mary Ann, the usage with the city this cable system itself is it's getting the bandwidth is being used up quite a bit by everybody streaming and stuff like that. So is that something that would have to be upgraded somewhere? Because yeah, I know we talked about fiber optics as the kind of what bring in to help business. And you, you would have to have it upgraded. We're, we're, we're having a problem right now. I mean, it's not a mega problem, but we're bumping up against the capacity every day. Uh, and we have no money to buy any more bandwidth with it. So, I mean, you know, there's a problem there. Okay. Um, so, Kathy and Marianne, I asked this question earlier because it, it, it's a concern and we need to address it. But do you feel like whether it's franchise fees that are being charged or uh, admin, administrative costs being charged to our utilities, do you feel like we are overcharging our enterprise funds? 
I guess I probably really can't honestly say I can I could answer that. Okay. I don't really deal with the numbers and so you I know some we are operating. Do some of the administrative work. I do administrative work, but I don't know percentage wise even what my percentage is in the budget. Okay. Mary Ann, same question. Without knowing what per and they did this many years ago, Kathy was here when they did it. What percentage of staff time is is dedicated to each of those um, enterprise funds is really tough to say. Are we being, is it being equal? Is it right? I, I, I don't know. Um, these percentages that we use currently are, are outdated. Uh, we've never done any analysis for that um, since I've been here and, and uh, a lot of things change. So uh, I can't say that yes, we are or no, we're not. Um, I realize that they say it's equal. Are we charging more, f too much to TV and not enough to, to another department? I, I don't know that answer without doing some type of analysis of how much time we spend doing things for, as an administrator for the other enterprise funds. Thanks, and, and I, did you have some things you wanted to talk about on your yeah, uh, what I what I have uh, up there is, is uh, okay, but I did come up with a couple other uh, uh, things. Paul did mention the, the generator issue, um, but I, I would really like a a possible uh, plan for the computers. Um, we don't have in anywhere that I can find any plan for. Um, upkeep, maintain, um, if we want to stream or put uh, council members on channel 23, I, I can't do that right now. I need to upgrade some, some uh, equipment. I, I think if we're going to go with that kind of theory, or even replacing computers, as you all know, we just uh, replaced our, our server, they should have been replaced several years ago. And I think we need to have a plan, so I would like that as, as one of the tasks up there um, to be able to, to do that because it is a cost. Uh, right now we don't have an IT budget. I budget a certain dollar figure and I try and stay within that range, but we've had two uh, major issues with computers and, and honestly I might run out of money before the end of the year because of those two major issues. We're not planning for those. Um, the other thing is, is we are required to audit the, the motel hotels here in town. Um, it hadn't been done uh, since I got here in 2007. Uh, we've always had it in the auditor's report that uh, we have not audited uh, hotels and motels. We tried to do that uh, last year and we got three done and we ran into some issues. Um, we are a small town and I feel almost 100% that we need an auditing firm to come in and audit those. It's not fair to staff to deal with the, um, the issues that we had dealt with, uh, the previous audits that we had. Um, if the audit doesn't go fine, we, we deal with a lot of repercussions. And I think an auditing firm could come in here for a very reasonable price. We don't have that many hotel motels and to, to do that. Um, and perhaps it's our auditing firm that we have now or we I don't know if there's just special auditing firms out there that just do that. I don't know that answer. But I would like to put that on the list as a possibility, uh, whether we incorporate with our contract with our current auditor or we go out for, for somebody else to do it. Is that, is that a, that, that would be a general plan for us? Um, Administration? Yeah, it's, it, it is. Um, it is a general, it, it has nothing to do with the enterprise fund. It has to do with general fund and tourism. Right, but that's, Basically. I guess that's my, that's it would my be a general fund. tourism, is it, it's not a tourism related no, activity. No, it would be a general fund cost okay. uh, to do that. But the funding could come out of the transit room tax receipt. Hmm. Right, Mary? That's where I'm, that's Cro where I'm Gross trying. receipts. Pardon? Gross receipts before the splits, wouldn't it? Or is could. that a part of the ORS defined 
And, I, and I'm asking, I don't yeah. know that. Uh, uh, the it, it find yeah. um, options that you can do. And I would think there are auditing firms that do other audits for other cities, counties, for tr TRT funds. I mean, rather than, you know, somebody knows how to do it, can get in, get out, get it done. Uh, I, I did a study on uh, the TRT, and uh, I know that we're behind the times uh, percentage-wise. I know um, the Stevenson uh, and Hood River, uh, they're one or two percent higher than what we charge. And uh, I think it's something to look at down the road, too, on budgeting, that if we increased uh, percentage or, or two percentages, that we would, uh, you know, we wouldn't uh, take any money from the taxpayers, but also uh, that we would uh, uh, generate money for uh, tourism also, we would cover uh, the charges uh, for an audit, you know, so we did an audit. So. Other questions? Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so with the audit that we did do, you said you got three, three done. We got three done. What did we learn? We learned that, that our, our uh, resolution is not defined enough for us to penalize the motels and hotels for not, one, providing us with the information, and two, when we request the information, we have no, no teeth for them no, to no comply. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so that's something else that should be addressed? Yes. Not today, though. Okay then, uh, with no other questions, we'll move to our last agenda item uh, today, which is to develop a list of proposed budget priorities. Uh, and I know Paul's been standing up ready with a marker. Is there some significance to the five empty <coughs> panels? This, this is the limit of my technology. <laughs> you get beyond a crayon and a piece of paper, the rest of the stuff out of heaven. The number five? Or are there five categories? No, there isn't. There isn't. There's plenty of sheets underneath that. I think there's five council members here. I wasn't <laughs> sure if we each got our, our own sheet. Yeah. There's five staff people, too. Maybe it's that one. <laughs> so what we're looking for is this. I'm going to start by saying that I, I think that the emergency services is, is a top priority. I don't think that that, I think that right now we're in the process of developing the specifics of it for the uh, public safety task force. So I, and I'm, I'm not sure what kind of specificity uh, you're looking for here and the staff is looking for, but um, I think we've heard loud and clear from the community Emergency services is a priority. I would let the, the department head speak for themselves, but this is, these kind of broad categories are fine with me. Hey, I, yeah, I, I would like to make one comment regarding that as a part of preparing for budget. We hear the term service levels mentioned a lot, and and I know we're doing the different cost scenarios. But I don't, which is good, and I think those are important. But I don't know each of those necessarily equate to my interpretation of a service level. And I neither do I think that what we mean by service level has been liberalized. And I, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But my idea of a service level is: do you ex does, does, do you expect? 10 minute response time, 20 minute response time. Do you expect 10 minute response time to a fire as well as an ambulance? Do you expect 10 minute response time with ALS? So I, it comes into the timing, I think, you know, uh, as far as the service level goes, as well as the cost. And 
I don't think we've ever the, the task force has outlined an explicit definition of what's meant by service level. That, that's a good point, Gail. And no, they have not. That was a discussion at their first meeting. Okay. And what they chose to do with that issue is have their community <coughs> meeting first and figure out what, what is the community really looking for. Okay. But you, if you really got into service levels, you'd go exactly where you're going. You want 24 hours seven, you want a, and you watch it in the big cities, there's a lot of discussion about what is the response times for police service and who shows up. And th okay. that's what service levels are. Okay, that's, that's all yeah. I wanted to comment on. You can expect the task force to come back and tell you this is the service level we should have and, and we'll be able to tell you how much that will cost. And, and when you're referring to so you're talking about the time to respond is it and is it who responds. How much time do you want somebody to get there? Okay. How, how okay. quick for the ambulance? Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'll jump in with another priority of mine then. Um, and please feel free to, to do the same. But uh, I think we need to get jobs. I think economic development is, is right after emergency services. And I think we're, again, I think we're in the process of that with our partnership with the board and our um, economic development task force and subcommittees as well as the downtown um, uh, revitalization committee. Um, so in terms of being specific, I think we've got some things already there, but I think we need to support the work of those, uh, of those committees. Probably add on to that too with the economic development and jobs would be the uh, probably the rate study, uh, the electrical, you know, uh, and also the uh, RFQ uh, on the uh, public works. Can we call that water or sewer? Yeah. To kind of go along with that a little more is just for inf our infrastructure. Uh, stabilization that we're looking for, not only with the water lines, the sewer lines, the upgrades that are needed there, but overall roads and the overall appearance, uh, just for the general infrastructure so it looks good for the economic development, I think that has to be a component of that. Well, I just wanted to state there on that, uh, on the rate study there for, uh, for power, um, I'm hoping maybe that will be done this budget year and we, maybe it needs to put extension if needed or we budget some money in there if it goes into next year's budget uh, or something. But I'm hoping that's going to be taken care of with this year's budget. Well, soon. Yeah, see, soon. <laughs> so I'm hoping that by July 1st, uh, maybe that will yeah. be complete. Okay. I, you know, I, I don't know that, but, uh, you know, we're definitely going to have a good start out, I hope, right? Well, <laughs> uh, so uh, may, maybe yeah. an extension or something, or, or it, the reality, Tracy, may be that it might take us. Into it the might take us here, but I think we should try to get it done this year because I think the community is going to have some major issues they're going to have to fix. I think on that too is the uh, urban development. I think uh, uh, in order to sell a town and, and jobs, you need uh, an urban, urban development downtown. Yeah. I think I, I look at downtown. I, look, I also look at uh, you know what we can do to support the, the ports work in their industrial park. Those are, as I think Chuck coined the term, those are the, the two engines of economic development in Cascade Locks. And and both of them are take take me back to the original point of jobs. We need jobs. That's in part why it's important that, that you adopt this on Monday night. We have to move from moving from one project to another to figuring out what is it we can do here in the community to create 
create jobs. And the reality for communities like Cascade Locks, I don't care whether you're in Burns or if you're in Nyssa, it's what can we do so the gas station can add one job? What can we do so that the restaurant adds two jobs? What can we do that's going to do, do that? Because that's where the jobs are. As we see in the exercise with the casino, all of that time that you invested as a community, all you need to have one person be able to say no. And you want to get away from that. So the thing that I was thinking of, and you kind of talked about it in the broader picture, but is our downtown revitalization plan. We have, well, we had the pictures up of what we wanted and we had that support for that. And so in order for businesses to want to either upgrade or add jobs, as you say, they need to see from the city that we're serious about doing this and not talking about it. So implementing that plan and getting that going, and I think we've, we've come to that conclusion, and finding simple ways to do these upgrades that we can partner with public-private partnerships and doing it that way and starting that. So however you want to encapsulate that besides downtown revitalization, but taking that plan and, and we, have this, we have this nice sheet of paper, this, but let's implement it. So how do we get past or go to the implement, implementation stage of that? It's a good question, Jeff. <clears throat> when we talk about downtown revitalization, we're talking about the current effort. There is a steering committee that's working on that and they are working off of the approved plan to figure out what are the things that we can do that are simple and quick because you need to prove to the community can actually do something. Having a plan that sits on the shelf that isn't a priority for the city to then make something happen. So I wouldn't be surprised if you, within the next 45 days, you get a recommendation from that steering committee that says, here's our vision for downtown. And hopefully it'll blow everybody's socks off. But if they come back and recommend to you, hey, let's develop a plan to replace the street lights. We've got to be ready to do that. You, you and I talked about that. And so what I throw out for staff to look at and work with the port is to create a public-private partnership, a grant program where city, port, work funds together, plus private uh, donations where we have these developed, we have this plan that shows the three street lights that uh, the streetscape project and the three street, street lights that are there replace the existing uh, wood poles, and arms that go out for lighting and use a ornamental style um, type of light post, figure out which one we want, and then solicit the businesses and citizens to donate money towards that. And then the matching grant would come from the city and the port to take those, uh, take that idea and start lining Wanapaw, looking at the idea of this is the defined area of that, and then slowly redoing all of the area, all of Wanapaw, and then maybe into the neighborhoods. So the question for you, is to can you do that work with the port, work with Chuck at the port and the steering committee to come forward with that sooner because that's, a, that's an immediate improvement that we can do and you'll get the buyout from tourism because they can hang the banners, they can put their uh, flowers there that they want. Look at the light posts that have the ability to plug in a water system to water that so it's easier to uh, water those plants and that type of thing. And that's an immediate impact that the, the business community as a whole and the community as a whole can get into the project and move forward because it's showing the citizens and the business members that we can, that we're serious about development and we're serious about what our community is doing. Uh, I'm informed there's already discussions going on with some of the tourism committee and some of the other downtown interests with some of the businesses to either buy a light pole or to match money. So I think a lot of that groundwork is being laid now. Okay. And when we say in our budget priorities, downtown revitalization as part of economic development, that specific project is going to require some, some resources. But when I when I put downtown revitalization, I don't know about the market speak for himself, but when I when I see that on that list, that's the kind of let's do something type project that, that I want to see on the budget. Mark? Yeah, I'm on the downtown revitalization the revitalization committee and there are things that we're trying to do that you know we don't have any money and so uh, we are going to paint the fire station but one of the things either if we sell it or don't sell it we need to paint the fire station the port has donated the money um, you know for the fire station also clean up it doesn't cost them any you know to clean up so we have a group of people uh, that's americorps that are going to you know clean up we haven't set a date yet and uh, all
also the uh, we're bringing uh, speakers in. We had a gentleman from Moffitt that you know, Mr. Ross, that uh, he has a lot of ideas that uh, can generate uh, business and, and tourists. That we uh, uh, Lance and I were just talking about this. That you know, sometimes outsiders when they come in, they see we get used to things uh, in town here, and, and what uh, happened the other night at the port pavilion. There was a, a lady, and I can't think of her name, but she said that there's a sign in the front going down the port that says closed. And, and also there's a few other things that she said too that out, you know, that she's from the outside and she's looking in that we, we take for granted or we don't notice. And I think she, you know, she has some good ideas. Um, but there's, there's a lot of things that, you know, we don't see that uh, uh, Moffitt has been really successful in bringing people in uh, with, uh, you know, not a lot of money, you know. And so, uh, so there are things happening, but it's not as, uh, you, you just don't see it, you know, sometimes, but they are, we are going to paint the fire station, and there's a few things that we're doing, so. Chris? Uh, yeah, get, getting back onto this, this light discussion, uh, and Kathy just reminded me that uh, uh, I think there's a little bit more than just picking the light and going with it. Uh, it's on a state highway 30. It's going to have to be approved by ODOT. So you need to be thinking about that when you're, when you're picking out your, your, your light pictures. I'm pretty sure she's We've right on that. We went through it before. So ODOT's going to have to be involved on the, on the fixtures you're going to put there. Well, maybe they'll say yes instead of no all the time. Maybe. I, I'm just saying. It's, no, it, no it, it's a hurdle you're going to have to look at. Yeah. I, hey, one other thing, just as an extension of the downtown revitalization as a part of economic development. Because one point, It's just not downtown. I mean, I think there ought to be some aspect that covers community community revitalization because it was mentioned about some of the old trashy, trashy trailers around town, and and it's not limited to downtown to make this an attractive area for businesses or additional residents. So I think it goes beyond the Another thing I wanted to add to our list of priorities uh, would come, I, I think the general term would be staffing, and we've heard a couple of issues, um, different departments. Um, uh, was it Rob raised the issue of um, staffing in public works, um, but we've also uh, talked about staffing in the office, and the last calendar year saw uh, a hit to our, our staff that that change the norm and, and increase the workload on our existing staff as well as decrease the, our, our capability to provide uh, services. So I think that needs to be addressed. Uh, and I think that uh, along with staffing, right, was the, I can't remember how you put it on your brown list over there, but the, Job description. No, that's not it. It's at the bottom that I can't Fourth see. Job. It, but it's the the concept of a, a uh, well. When I asked Marianne and Kathy, what's the you know, are we charging too much for administration? Well, we don't know because there hasn't been a study. I think that needs to be looked at as well. And Gary brought that up earlier. Um, you know, we need to know um, our. Our office, is our office staff providing the same level of service to the departments that, that is budgeted for those departments? Um, I got my hand up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, before you do that, Mayor, so you're talking about do we have the appropriate support to the enterprise? I do. 
think we need to be, and we need to find a way to address that so that we yeah. can answer the question. And, and this is part of the transparency that Gary brought up. Uh, you know, are we, as a city, are we, are we allocating those resources properly? Okay, if, if, we're, exactly. if we're charging cable too much, why are we, you know, let's, let's fix that. But we don't know the answers to those, so yeah. we have to find a way to, um, to, to document that. Gail? We did that study at one time. Well, we're just going to say my lip was quivering. Okay. I was just <laughs> going through some past minutes due to a records request, and I believe it was, I mean, I went through a, about three years' worth, but I believe it was 1998. Yeah, I, I, I know we Somewhere did it. Basically, I, I figure what we call a time and motion study, but they came in and they timed, I think, the staff's, you know, daily activities and what, how We they had to keep track of that, everything we worked on right. for a certain amount of time and then and, shipped and it off. If we can get a copy of that old study. I didn't see the study, I saw minutes. I, I'm, I'm sure it's somewhere on your desk. <laughs> <laughs> or, or that would be my desk. Yeah, gave it to Paul and <laughs> you'll, you'll get it back. But because the city's business model, you know, hasn't changed a lot. Right. I mean, back when we, we still had public works, we still had our, a lot of our infrastructure. And maybe, maybe rather than having a whole new study, I don't know what the cost, we could just, you know, currentize that, that one study with uh, aligning it to our new model and make changes to it rather than spend all the time to go through it. Yeah, rather than do a new study, there may be some, some way to be more efficient. There but may be some but, but I, I think it's a bigger issue just to, to look at our, <laughs> you know, to make sure we have adequate staffing first, right? Because as, as we're hearing, we just, I mean, several, several answers have come up today. We don't have the staff to do that. You know, that's been the answer. Exactly. So, so that's the bigger issue to me, but I think that um, we, ha we can't lose sight of that, um, the issue of, you know, let's be transparent about how we're using these resources. Are we, are we allocating them correctly? And I'm going to try to do in the program budget format to document some of that, but we, we may actually Looking at the budget, what kind of hit or what the positive and negative effects if we got out of the city cable business on the, as a as a budget priority? See how much that hits our the revenue coming in, and does that current model that we have right now is that properly staffed, if you will, and it shows work orders when it comes out of city light, and is 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 that are those balances there? Because if city cable is costing us money, should we be out of the city cable business? And if you know we are creating a uh, a product that is underselling, as we've heard that through the city power or through uh, rate studies, um, that we're creating a product that is underselling the private sector, and is that what the city should be doing? So we need to look at that. Yeah. yeah. Along those lines, one uh, at some point, I think we ought to present to the community, one, I, from what I've, I've been convinced we are under underfunded in CATV, and if we are and we have our rate problem, my approach would be a suggestion that we arrive at a new rate, we go ahead and get it on a ballot, if it passes we get the rate, if it fails we shut it off. I mean, we're, we're trying to avoid direct confront <coughs> word, confrontation with the community and putting the burden on the community to make the choices when we're trying to muddle it up. You know? That's one. It, is it uh, clear that cable rates have to go to the ballot? You need to talk to your lawyer about well, it. Well, I know, but is that is that being answered with the utilities? Yeah, the attorney is researching <coughs> Do we know when we'll have an answer? Because that's that, like two weeks old information. Uh, I, I don't know. I just Can you ask? Yes. Thank you. And, and but the thought was to have her have her do that research and then come in and report. Because I honestly don't know if what you all are saying is 
right or not, or if people are afraid of doing it for fear somebody's going to recall you or something. I mean, who knows? Well, I, I just wanted to comment. I, I, I'm not afraid of uh, of putting a, a rate increase on the ballot. I don't think anyone should be. Um, you know, and I think that the, the way that Gail's framing it there is the correct way. Uh, you can't provide these services uh, at the current rates. Would you like a rate increase or would you like the service to stop? Um, I think it gets a little bit more complicated when you talk about drinking water and electricity because I don't think you want, I'm not sure how you can stop providing drinking water or stop providing electricity. Um, well, they could shut it off with those that vote no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't have cable, but I feel that I'm paying towards the general fund that if, if we don't have enough money to support it, that it's coming out of the general fund. And so it's taking money out of people that, uh, that don't have the system. You know, so the people that, that want the system should pay for it, but it should, there should be enough. If we have to do a rate adjustment, well, then it should be to vote. But I think some of these, and not many communities are facing this, do we actually want to be in that business? Is it doing what we want? And I think the reality is some of the things that you do, you need to get out of. I guess the question is, is with some of these out there, put it to the ballot measure or not, but can you encapsulate this in doing a survey through what we're already doing to send our billing out, but something that's going to be comparable so we can ask, get that feedback, because we had four citizens here giving us ideas and priorities. There's other people out there, whatever reasons they're not able to express their ideas, opinions, and concerns, you use a three-pronged approach, whether it's a paper system using the ID from your electrical rate, your uh, ID number or account number, um, mailing that back, giving some type of incentive to get that done, having a walk-in system, paper system that they're able to fill out if they want to do that because they can ask questions, or doing it off the internet. You know, those type of things, I think you have to go out and engage the community and reach right. so we can get that back because we can sit here and talk to our blue in the face until it comes time for the rubber to meet the road, we're going to get rid of something is the only time we hear about it. And so until we get ahead of that, we need to have some type of feedback system. Gail's always talked about surveys that have been done in the past, but how can we do it more efficiently and get more real-time uh, data back from, for the citizens? Yeah, I, we, we can clearly do that. I'm told, though, that most people didn't show up today because they heard that Gail wasn't going to be out fishing, so there would be a lot of fish for them. <laughs> <laughs> Another one that I, I want to put, and I, I guess I think of it as also under the, the category of, of staffing. Um, I'm not sure exactly if it fits right there or fits with the economic development or completely a different category, though, is the electronic payments. Um, that's, been a, that's been a goal up there. And, um, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure what budget, you know, what budget I is going to pay for that, but I think that's something that um, I don't want it. I don't want it to get lost in the shuffle because it's a it's a service that, that uh, you know increasingly is expected. Right. I just and I don't know again whether something fits into what category, but I don't think uh, economic development is where I can. Heading, but I think we should do more marketing of our community. I know it's marketing is listed under tourism, but I'm just talking just general marketing. You know, every day somebody coming into Cascade Locks that knows we're here to buy gas or to shop. Um, the events are like you know flashes in a pan. They're here, they're gone. Whether there's we had comments earlier, whether there's any real attendance at them. Um, but marketing that brings people here every day of the year. Um, and that goes to the, the thing I brought up on the, the, the you know, dilapidated housing or, or abandoned housing, I guess that's what I brought up the other night, was do you fight that with codes and regulations or do you fight it with economic development that those kind of places are just renewed because there's so many people living here that they're looking for places to live? Um, and I don't know what the right answer is. 
could penalize people for for a community that's in decline, or you can fight it on the other end and um, you know with more jobs, more uh, people wanting to live in town. So I guess that's that's like where do you where do you put the priorities? But I think our tourism dollars have always gone to. Um, marketing that wasn't the day-to-day -day marketing. Stevenson, uh, the city of Stevenson does a good job on making tracks for Stevenson program. Right. Uh, that's not promoting any one thing, it's promoting everything yeah. and, and continually for visiting the town every day instead of events. Um, there's other things that do event marketing over there, but um, I, I've always seen that as a shortfall in our in our dollars that we've spent for that. The, the other thing as far as priorities go, I, I know the codification or codification is, is like way down on page five sometimes, but what's been frustrating for me over the years is when you work on a program and you're almost done with it and then somebody goes, well that's in violation of ordinance 420 or, or, or you know whatever the number is and you don't know. You don't know if it is. Um, so you want codification? Well, for me, that I think that would be an important thing to do. You have to have Just to have one book and all that old stuff that's down the road and up in smoke is is uh, is gone. I know this will make Kathy sad, but we'll put it up there. Some some towns, some towns have done um, college people that'll come in and do that. Um, you know, as an in internship kind of thing. But when you're, when you're done with it, I don't know if there's a blanket thing where you can say everything else is gone. Um, so you don't have vaults of old ordinances that right. will bait you later. But it's very, it, even for staff that the contract with somebody, it is labor intensive. Yeah. You have to commit to going through everything. Firm will come in, they'll look at your stuff, and they'll do the first cut, and they'll begin to identify. And even in the smallest of communities, you have multiple ordinances and resolutions dealing with the same topic that are countermanding, mm -hmm. they'll identify for you, here's the issues you got to resolve. Uh, I'm guessing, I don't know whether you've looked at the prices, Kathy, but you're talking about 15, maybe 20,000. But it's well worth it. Or more. Or more. And I but did talk to Alex just to ask her, so I'm trying to get some numbers ready for budget, but, you know, ask her if she would consider looking at our ordinances and she wasn't up to that task. So, so she, that's one avenue gone. But our yeah. past attorney said they, they would be willing to do that. I haven't contacted him to see since they're not our attorney firm if they would still be interested in what the price was. But I do have a firm that does it. I have their, their price. And it, and it was about a year ago um, that, that we sat here, different counsel, different attorney, and he made that, you know, he was one of the staff people at the table. He made that recommendation. That was one of his primary recommendations was that we look at the codification of ordinances. Bill? Yeah. Um, I don't know where this fits, but one thing I'd like to see is a repeated statement of the community newsletter or equivalent. And the other thing that, I don't know if this is budget, but I'm having think of it. I, I, and I think we used to have this, but I think there ought to be a, a, a city profile of, you know, the advantages we have in taxes between um, uh, Multnomah County and, and uh, Hood River County and what our current rates are for different things. And I mentioned to the gal on tourism, you know, that one idea might be, we got a lot of people, one, that go on the boat, two, that come out for fireworks. And if we had a pamphlet that could be handed out, you know, I'm, I'm not, I know everybody's focusing on jobs, but I, I'm, my, my bias is more to look to increasing our residency, and I think the jobs will come. And I think this is a, a good place to live. Right. And we just need to promote some of the advantages we have over some of the other locations. Exactly. So with what Gail said and with what Randy said, is there a possibility to look at a budget position for 
basically a PR firm or a PR person that's doing the planning, doing the, the pamphlets to say, this is why you need to come live in Cascade Locks. Is that a possibility to look at budget-wise from tourism to where you have that subject matter expert that knows how to do the day-to-day -day operations? We had somebody a little bit, and there was uh, some reasons why the, that person's no longer here, but is there, is there a firm or a marketing-type director or, or program that could encapsulate what tourism does and do it better? Because that all fits under tourism, bringing more people in, having, um, this is why it's a great place to be here. I just noticed that we have that some of our papers fell down. Maybe we could get some some better tape for, <laughs> uh, for, for all of our newspaper. Or uh, I'd like to bring up the idea that maybe we, like Marianne mentioned, if we digitize some of the stuff, maybe we ought to look at a replacement schedule for our computers and along along the same lines as uh, what uh, Public Works and Electrical do for their their machines. And then you wouldn't have to write it down. You could just type it into a computer. I know you wouldn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wouldn't really push you out of my though. comfort zone, but <laughs> that's OK. And I guess the other part of that is if going green is the trend that we always see is how much less do we go paper? How how can we go pay more paperless with what council does and the general city does by upgrading computers and having smaller laptops or pad, iPads or whatever it is? You know, look at that for cost saving measures. It's going to be money up front, but long term, you know, a printer costs a lot of money. Those cartridges cost a lot of money long term. And then uh, in the same computer category, I think upgrading the website is, uh, should be a priority. Um, we've, we've got. I think a good system, but we've had just had some recent discussions in our meetings about there's upgrades available for that, that we could do more things, and it also will tie into our marketing and economic development exactly. if we have the capability to do that, so rather than paying out money um, for various, uh, you know, other small little computer projects, if we can if we can have a central um, website that that does marketing. That Shows the, the codified ordinances and, and so on, and that's the that's the one stop shopping center, so to speak. Yeah. And, and along the same lines, and I know this might be being looked at, but I think it ought to be on every list we have. I, I think we need to be sure that uh, ambulance billing becomes more electronic based wireless or something. I mean, the technology exists. It's a matter of putting it together to expedite that. Yeah. Great. Um, in economic development, I know we talked around it, but we need more people that live in town. And, and all those things address it, but maybe that ought to be a separate goal is increase our population because that affects rates, it affects our school. Uh, affects our recreation program that Karen mentioned. And she mentioned she doesn't know what it is. We have 100 less kids in town than we did 20 years ago, um, yeah. at least of, the, of that age span, because we've gentrified. You know, we're, we're not attracting the younger families like we did um, because of the jobs. But, I mean, that ought to be a goal is just increased population. Well, could we word that a little bit different? Because somebody would read that and think that well, we could cancel a childhood <laughs> education <laughs> on birth control. <laughs> 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 I'm okay. How about you? What do you want? You want to be out of the deal? Let me know if you succeed. But a goal of the city ought to be, you know, what's our, what's our optimal size? <laughs> you know, it can't be 1,185. It's, you know, it's, it's got to be. I would assume in their comprehensive plan they do have some projections. You're required by state. But, but in those plans, we got dinged a few years ago because we projected too much, and there was just no way. But as, a, as far as a goal goes, I mean, we ought to be shooting for, you know, more than what we think it's going to come. I mean, we ought to be shooting for two, three thousand. So these are these are budget priorities 
and, and I want to make sure that, that when, when the staff uses these to, to create the budget and the budget message that we give them enough specificity that they can take something like that. Okay, well, how are we, you know, how are we going to create a budget that, that points to that, um, you know, the increased population? Well, it may be, Mayor, that what we do is, is recommend that you update the comprehensive plan because that's what we do that. I think it's, it is also critical, and that's what the, the multifaceted approach tells you. There is, there is a fine line that connects all of that. In order to get jobs, you have to have more people. You have to have the infrastructure. It has to be a safe community. You have to have a school. You have to have all these things to do that. It's the balance that we, we get out of or, or in those marketing materials, like yes. Gail said, we say, exactly. you know, please yeah. move to town. We have cheap rates, you know, cheap housing, mm -hmm. lots available. I don't know. Property taxes. Yeah. Well, yeah. We had Bruce Sorty come to town. He's the, some of you have heard him, he's the extension service, small community economist. He travels all over the rural areas. Uh, and he's fascinated by the price differential. What it would cost you to live in Hood River or buy a home comparison to what it cost you here. And his question is always, why aren't you marketing that? Right. Why aren't you using yeah. that? Because yeah. his, his quote was like 318 average mean price for a home in Hood River. Here's like 180, I think is what I remember from that, what he gave out. Like that. Right in those numbers like that, and that's, just, that's a pretty yeah. substantial margin. Hey, one last thing. Um, you know, I think this is the part of standing up. When you guys talk about a website, you check this with a technical expert, but it used to be having a website was not in itself your solution. Uh, it, you used to pay in for linkages, and maybe you don't anymore with Google, you know what I mean? But if you typed in a keyword like, you know, sailing, do we show up? Or, you know, sturgeon fishing, do we show up? And that's where the expenses were used to be. So the website itself is not the end. If you type in the exact words, you can get to the website. But there were a lot of uh, keyword search linkages. Mm -hmm. that There used to be a fee associated with those. And I don't know if there are today. I, do you know Mary Ann? No, I do not. Yeah, the question to ask Dave. But if, if, no matter what you spend on a website, if you don't tie in if, to those keyword Google searches, keywords. you're kind of wasting Okay, uh, I wanted to uh, just ask, just kind of go around the, the circle with the staff and ask if you take a look at this list, um, just point out something maybe if you feel that we've forgotten something or if you feel comfortable with it. So uh, start with Tracy. Well, I, I feel pretty comfortable with what, what you have up there. The, the, the thing about it is, is budget priorities, you know, I'm more looking out for, for what is going on in my budget. And uh, you know, I, I feel pretty, pretty comfortable with, with uh, whatever budget I, for for, for my, uh, or, or our department is is put out there. And uh, you know, I keep hearing this. Uh, I'm going to kind of go off the path here just a second, but I keep hearing this. Well, you know, you've got to be transparent, and you know, you got to have a work order system to to be transparent and. I'll tell you, anybody can go and look through every invoice that, that gets paid out of, out of city life, and I have no problem with them looking at that uh, as far as transparency. Uh, you know, so, uh, no, I feel pretty comfortable with it all. I mean, I'm comfortable with that part of it. I, I look at some specific needs that I see that we're, we're coming up with and, and Paul and I'll be bringing back to you even right. before budget time. Right. You know, sure. As far as increasing the staffing in public works by one man. I know that was part of the reason and the goals of the council and hired me as a, as a consulting public works superintendent. Um, one of the things that I see too is that even though we did the improvements on metering for our wells and we're able to protect our water, 
water rights. The SCADA system that we've got from 1995 or whatever does not interface with the new system. So to be able to do that. So I see that as a budget need that we need to turn around and look at for next year as far as putting it in. Um, and then what we talked about as far as some of the equipment and stuff. And I know that we'll elaborate on that more as we get into the equipment project uh, process and into the budget process. But, but there's some specific things that they can turn around and be beneficial for the community as we turn around and, and start towards your goals of improving things to make it easier for us to be able to maintain it. So, Paul, I'm going to suggest that we put on the list equipment needs as a general uh, category to be to be filled in as we move forward in the budget. Can we add vehicles to that? Vehicle and equipment needs? Yeah, and, it, and maybe computers goes under that as well because computers would be considered equipment. Staff transitions were brought up in electrical, and of course we have one in, in administration, but is that, does that go to the budget, or is that just something we all know we got to work on? But the transition sir. piece for electric is going to be an objective in the next year's budget for the electric department. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that, to me, that comes under you know, the category of staffing. Just staffing. Yeah. Okay. And that's one of those things Paul's talking about is behind recognizing the, the needs that aren't specific. Mm -hmm. but, but your needs will transcend all of them. Uh, there's a huge need to give uh, Kathy some relief and to have a backup uh, in case something happens to Kathy or she's out of town or decides to take a vacation. I, I worry more about One thing that kind of came up in this when I was having talks with all the staff and was deleted quite a bit out of last year's budget is um, training, in the training budget. There was a, somebody had talked to, you know, look at cutting that, but I think developing and encouraging our personnel that work for city staff is huge, not only for retention, but stimulates the, the mind in, in looking for best practices. So I think in this budget, please look at uh, reinstating or looking at what is a good solid foundation for a training budget, not just for staff here at City Hall, but through all departments, because if we are looking at this transition, do we want to develop and encourage personnel from within the organization, the city, to t take in those leadership roles, those, those different roles, and so we have to start providing and looking and laying that groundwork for them to do that, and I think it's important to do that. Because they've shown a commitment, the, the current employees here have shown a commitment to wanting to be in this community and work for the city and continuing to, to help develop them lessens the chance for them to go somewhere else and just look at this as a springboard to go move on 
to another community. So I think yeah. in, in that is an important component for us. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think, you know, the way around the road, you know, we can fine tune it maybe and add uh, some of the things that are in those categories, but I think basically I, I like what I see there. Okay. Okay, I don't have anything else. <laughs> Allow me keying off your thing, just one specific thing. As I understand it, there's a water certification class or test available in March. And I think that both Sheldon and Matt took it before. It didn't pass, time. but they they missed it by just a little bit, as I understand it. And I know that's an important point for our diversification, and I, I hope that uh, they're heavily encouraged to go back and try that again. And, and I have been, as far as that portion of it goes, and been trying to encourage them in order to do so. Part of the thing that um, they need is they need some actual classroom time and preparation for that exam in order to be able to do so. And to be able to turn around and send them to Salem or send them to Bend in order to be able to go, you know, for three days training is difficult when you've got such a small public works staff for the crises that we are encountered here. So that's part of where a staffing increase to turn around and help to free up some time so that maybe one can go at one point and one can go at another point. The other thing that is happening is that um, there is a, a same thing as an exam review um, for water distribution that is going to be taking place in Camas, and I believe it is the first part of May. And then this the um, next testing round comes in June. So that one there, I really kind of talked to Sheldon already, and I said, hey, that's close enough that you could drive back and forth. And the Oregon test and the Washington test is now the same. So they could go there, train, and be able to take the Oregon certification exam. And he seemed very positive about that. Okay. So, right. And I wouldn't let just my caustic position. But we're, you're never going to have a luxury of being able to afford somebody to be gone. But I think those kinds of things are critical enough. As I understand it, you do have temporary people that can yeah. fill in. So there shouldn't be an excuse about not making it. Now, Paul, um, you had mentioned to me earlier that you had the dots. Are you looking for us to develop priorities within the, the list that's up there now, or are you comfortable with just using those? You know, we'll get you some better tape to keep them up. But, uh, do you want dots on those as well? I do not need the dots. If you're comfortable with us bringing this list forward for you to adopt, I think we can build the budget around those priorities with the caveat that there are other things that have to come into that also. Yeah, one last thing I want. These do not include some of the topics that the department managers have as important items for this year. That's right. So, okay, because I, I just didn't want to be redundant and repeat some of the points that were brought up, but I'm expecting those items to be included. On the exactly. Discussion. Yeah, you will see, you'll see many of these items that were sitting over here included in the budget. This will help us. You just take that economic development piece that I mean, to begin to convert the organization and its operation to focus more on economic development makes huge changes and it won't be done in one year, it'll probably take three to five years. But that is really a direction that communities need to go. You need to focus on how do we create jobs? How do we add taxpayers? How do we add value? Otherwise, we're, we are gonna be committed to cutting all the time and that's not gonna make anybody happy. Okay. Uh, then the uh, last item for us to consider is adjournment. So moved. Well, second. It's been a motion and a second. I knew that Gail would jump right out. <laughs> so, Gail and Randy. Not too uh, oh, it was, oh, it was you. Me. Okay, we'll give it a second to jump then. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Say opposed. Motion carries, we're adjourned. And Mayor, before you all run out, I want to thank you all for committing this time. I want to thank the staff for committing the time to do this and the citizens who took the time to come out and